Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. Welcome everyone to the workshop today in the online program organized by the Postgraduate Student Society of Social Sciences and Humanities of the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities of University Technology Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Thanks to the uh, School of Graduate Studies, UTM, for allowing uh, PGSS in Kuala Lumpur to collaborate with our sister society in UTM Johor Bahru. And beyond UTM, we have reached to another postgraduate student society in another university in Malaysia. And we have gone further to join our hands with three other universities at international level. So thanks to the PGSS of the Faculty of Electrical Engineering in UTM JB, uh, FOTEPS, UTHM, Malaysia, University of Anbar, Iraq, National University of Modern Languages, Pakistan, and Southeastern University of Sri Lanka. Uh, our contact persons from these partners are Mr. Manjula Vikramatilaka, Dr. Sonia Lohana, Dr. Ali Salman Humadi, Madam Sumeira Asif, and uh, Dr. Mohammed Nawaz. Thanks to the advisor, PGSS, UTM, uh, Dr. Noura Bindi Mohammed Noor, and the advisor, PGSS, FSSH, KL, UTM KL, Dr. Wan Farah Wani, Wan Fakuddin. I am Jamila Hanun Umar, your moderator. Before moving on to the next part, please remember the ground rules. Keep your microphones muted unless the speaker needs your response or you have a, a burning question. Otherwise, place your questions in the chat box and they will be answered by the speaker during the talk or at the end. Towards the end, we will take some pictures for our record, so please be prepared. Fill in the registration come feedback form, which will be shared in the chat box. We'll send you the video recording and the certificate to your email provided in the form. Yeah, just before passing the control to the speaker, a brief introduction to our speaker today. Uh, professor uh, Dr. Mohammed Aminul Islam is currently working as a professor in the School of Business, Business Innovation and uh, Technopreneurship at University, Tec uh, University Malaysia Police. He received his bachelor's degree from the International Islamic University Malaysia MBA and Doctor of Philosophy from University Science Malaysia. He also completed an advanced diploma in teaching in higher education from Nottingham Trent University. As an award-winning academic as well as researcher, Professor Islam received Raffles Education Founders of Award for being the most deserving academic staff of Olympia College Malaysia in 2006. Excellent Academic Support Award in 2009, the Best Lecturer Award in 2010, the Best Supervisor Award in 2018 and 2019 for producing the highest number of PhD graduates, and the Research Excellence Award in 2020 at University of Malaysia Perlis. He also won the Best PhD Thesis Award 2011 for the Outstanding PhD Dissertation at University of Science Malaysia. He is a member of Asian Academy of Management, Malaysian Institute of Management, and an associate member of Malaysian Finance Association. He is a visiting professor of Northern University, Bangladesh, Daffodil International University, East Delta University, Tamasat University, Thailand, and an academic advisor of Central, Uni uh, Central College, Penang. He has authored and co-authored five books, two book chapters, and about 200 research papers. His writing has so far attracted about 550,000 reads in the research gate and about 4,600 citations in Google Scholar. 20 students completed PhD with his supervision. Uh, supervision. Uh, currently, he is supervising 15 PhD and 15 postdoctoral scholars. His uh, recent research has spanned issues related to entrepreneurship, IPO underpricing, earning management, blockchain, blue economy, Islamic banking, and Sukuk. Now I kindly invite Professor Aminul Islam.
Bishra. I'll say, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Bishra Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and very good uh, morning, very good afternoon, very good evening. Uh, do you have participants from many countries? Uh, I see even in the chat box, you do have participants from China, from Bahrain, from Tanzania, Palestine, Sri Lanka, and of course, uh, Pakistan, India, and uh, nearby Malaysian countries. And uh, I do expect a lot of participants from Nigeria also. All right, so it's, it's going to be a truly uh, international uh, webinar. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, take the opportunity to congratulate and thank uh, the Postgraduate Student Society of University Technology Malaysia uh, for organizing this webinar. Uh, I think this is the first kind I'm uh, doing with them. Uh, but Jamila, when she called me, she requested to conduct two webinars. <laughs> I said, okay, let me do one first, uh, since my schedule is quite packed. Almost every week I do have webinars. So I told her, okay, I'll give you one first, then later we will uh, think about it. So what we did uh, after consultation with Juan uh, Jamila, uh, actually we combined two topics together. Okay, so research problem and then theoretical framework. Uh, this uh, research has integrated uh, uh, thing, so uh, we will do the connection. So while I start with research problem at the end, I will connect it with uh, uh, the theoretical framework. All right, so that's the idea of doing it. And of course, I have to also uh, thank the university from Sri Lanka, from India, and from Iraq uh, for joining us. All right, uh, thank you very much again. And uh, uh, let me start. Huh? Let me share the slides. Uh, uh, participants, kindly uh, make sure uh, you are muted. Uh, your microphone is muted. Uh, last month, when we, I had a webinar at USM, uh, the two participants were not muted, so we had a lot of trouble. So please uh, keep, an, keep an eye on your uh, icon, whether you are muted or not, and make sure others don't feel disturbed because of uh, you know your mistake. That's number one. Number two, uh, those of you are familiar how to share uh, this uh, live uh, program with uh, Facebook, please do so so that more participants can be uh, benefited, all right? All right, let me uh, share the screen. And... Uh, Dr. Shafiq Rahman, can you please stop sharing your content, please? Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Can you see my screen now? Yes, please. All right. Yes, Thank problem. you. Yes. Okay. Let me go to slideshow. Okay. So that, that's the title for today's uh, webinar: Defining Research Problem and Developing Theoretical Framework. All right, and I have given uh, my information here. I will share the slides with Juan Jamila. Those of you are interested for the slides, you can get it from her. Uh, that's number one. And number two, um, after one week, possibly we will uh, get the video and then I will run it again in my YouTube channel. So once it is in my YouTube channel, then the below the YouTube channel, the slides should be also there for you. So you can even download from there, from my YouTube channel. Those of you are new with me, I do have an uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the name is Platform for Research and Development, where I have uploaded about 70 videos. And these all videos are related to uh, uh, students doing masters by research or PhD. Okay, so it should be beneficial for you. So you can easily uh, access to my YouTube channel and you can watch the videos available there. All right, let me start now. Uh, okay, uh, let me start with Albert Einstein, uh, one of the greatest uh, scientists in our age. Um, he has said that basically the formulation of the research problem is often more essential than the solutions. So formulation of research problem is more important than a solution because the solution is dependent on the identification or definition of the research problem. Uh, I will just give a simple example. If you are not feeling well, you are unhealthy, and you go and see the doctor, if doctors fail to diagnose the disease correctly, it doesn't matter how expensive 
how efficient medicine is given to you, you won't be cured. So the problem got to be identified well. And same goes to research. If you are undertaking a research, we have to make sure that we have identified and defined research problem correctly. That will determine the procedures later on, the subsequent stages and procedures. And that will determine the kind of solution that we are going to have. All right, uh, it's a quick reminder. <clears throat> research is um, an organized, objective, and systematic process. Study a particular problem that needs a solution. So research is undertaken when there is a problem, and the problem requires a solution. There are many problems out there. When you are living at home, you are outside home, you are in the office, you are playing games, uh, you are traveling, you are mingling around with friends, you are socializing, networking, whatever. We see there are many problems. Huh? Every moment we uh, do things, uh, we always encounter problems. But not all problems require solutions. Okay, so we have to have problem that requires solution, something that bothers you really, huh? something that bothers you, something troubles you, something creates problem for others, right? So something that requires a warrants solution, that is a problem. And a research got to be undertaken by identifying and defining that problem that requires a solution. But again, the process is very uh, clear, right? As it is in the definition, the process has to be very organized, objective, and systematic. All right. So research got to be very organized, effort with clear cut objective, and the process got to be very significant from A to J, from the beginning until the end. Now, this is how research is undertaken. If you look at it, uh, it starts with a research problem where we state. Uh, the knowledge prior to your research, right, or our research. So we start with what we have, and then we end up with adding what we don't have, okay? So we start with a research problem or research question with the prior knowledge that we have, and at the conclusion, we state uh, what we found from our research, and then we raise more questions. There's something very interesting, huh? Uh, when we do research, uh, we feel like at the end, I provide solutions, everything. That is impossible. You might provide some kind of solution, and that may not be the And that gives you more room to conduct few more researches, okay? Uh, uh, that's the reason we undertake research in the same area that people have been researching for decades, you know, years. Uh, uh, of research and still we do research in the same area because uh, solutions uh, uh, provided uh, are not adequate. Uh, uh, can you uh, please, uh, uh, brother, can uh, you please mute your microphone, please? All right, so these are the components of empirical research. A quick reminding uh, research, you start with a problem and then we will um, have a problem in mind eh? and then we will. Define it uh, with the support of literature available, with the support of theories, and then we will identify variables on that. And then only we develop theoretical framework and the, uh, the rest of the process continues. So today's talk is starting with the from the very beginning, and then we jump one stage. Huh? <laughs> so we are not doing literature review or systematic literature review talk today. We will learn how to identify and define a problem, and from problem, we'll jump into Research framework. But again, I'm going to have clear cut link from research problem to research framework without doing systematic literature review. I'll do that. I've organized the slides in that way. This is something that um, I have developed to, to make it uh, understandable by researchers who undertake research. I compare research with a tree. Okay, so it's a tree analogy. And um, a tree, uh, whether it's going to be strong uh, or not, it depends much on the roots of the tree. If the roots are strong and go deeper in the soil, then it's, they stand, uh, the tree stand is strong. Even, uh, even if you have a strong wind and it storms, the, 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 still is, the tree will be still there, okay? So, and then uh, the tree, the body, I compare it with theoretical framework, uh, whether the tree would be able to 
sustained with the storm and other environmental effect it has or not. It depends on how strong the root, you know, that the body is. So one is the root, which is got to be very strong, and then your root and the branches of the tree I compare with underpinning theories. So later, when I'm going to talk about theoretical framework, I'm going to discuss about the theoretical framework together with underpinning theories and theories, all that. So don't worry. And I compare the leaves of the tree with literature review. The beautification of the tree is basically with, uh, goes very well with the leaves, right? Uh, same goes to your research when you're doing research. The beautification of research is done by literature review. All right. Um, I'm not going to explain much because this is not the topic for today. Okay. Uh, and then um, the contribution of your research is same as the outcome of the tree. Uh, when you plant a tree, what do you want? Uh, you want flowers or you want the fruits? Okay. So whether the tree is a good one uh, or not, it depending on the kind of flower you get or the kind of fruits you get. Uh, so that's what it is. When you finish our research at the end of it, we have to show something new. We have to show something new, something different, something significant, something relevant, okay, something useful uh, to us. Okay, so that's what we need. Uh, but again, I'm going to have more discussion on it later. And the data quality, I compare it with the quality of the soil and all that. Okay, a tree having problem uh, could be having problem due to uh, the shortage of fertilizers, could be shortage of water, could be poor quality of uh, soil and all that. So the research problem, as you said, that it comes from the roots. So your data got to be collected from the roots. So that's how I collect it. So data quality got to be connected with the research problem, where the data comes from. All right. So let me uh, continue. This is what um, something I found in the social media and found it very nice. Uh, Sometimes when you go to proposal defense, uh, pre-viva or final viva, that's what you see. Uh, we see the way examiners speak. Um, it looks like uh, they want uh, an apple uh, in, 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 in an orange tree, or they want banana in an apple tree. You know, that's what is impossible. Okay. Uh, that's what we do not really want. Uh, new knowledge contribution doesn't mean uh, you have to produce orange in an apple tree, or you have to put this mango in a jackfruit tree. It's not like that. <laughs> Basically, what you want is. Uh, we want you to produce apple in the apple tree, but the possibly your contribution would be apple size is bigger than it is a contribution. Uh, your tree produces more quantity of apple. It is a contribution. Your tree, uh, new tree uh, apple is more tastier. It is a contribution. So that's what we want to see. When you are conducting a research, especially PhD, we'd like to see something different, but it doesn't mean that we want oranges in an apple tree, you don't want that, okay? And that's why you have underpinning theory and supporting theories. And with that, you will have something new. That's what we want, huh? So when I'm going to talk about theoretical framework, research framework, and conceptual framework, I'm going to talk uh, more on this later. Okay, let me start with today's topic, problem. Uh, what is a problem then? Um, problem is basically a question raised for inquiry, consideration, or solution. Right? So, some kind of question that is raised, okay, for inquiry, uh, for consideration, or for, so for solution. So, something that uh, that affects uh, us, something that bothers us, something of concern uh, of industry and society, and uh, that what requires some kind of solution. That's what how we define a problem. Now, uh, what do we do uh, with problem? Most of us, what do you do? Uh, certain cases when we see a problem, we just ignore them until and unless it affects me or affects us seriously. Say, for example, you wake up in the morning and you have little uh, uh, leg pain and you can still walk, you can still run, so you just ignore it. Unlike it becomes so serious that you cannot really walk properly, then you <laughs> run to the doctor for a solution, right? So it depends on the severity of the problem. So most of the time when we encounter to a problem, that's what we do. Either we ignore them, we talk about them, or we try to solve them. So as a researcher, when you see a problem affecting society, industry, country, or the world, affecting the humankind, then we try to solve it. 
by doing a research. Okay. So as a true researcher, we got to be always inquisitive. Our mind got to be very inquisitive. We always have to think, uh, why is this happening? Uh, how, how, how can you solve this? You know, uh, what are the things that is contributing to this? Um, how, how can you find some kind of solution that may help us to solve it? Okay. So that kind of inquisitive mind and thinking uh, has to be developed as a researcher. That's the first prerequisite as a researcher. Mind got to be inquisitive. Anything we see, anything we see beside us, around us, we have to question it. We have to question it. Huh? We have to question it. Uh, you know the history in the U.S. Uh, where the, the culture was like everything. They used to say, yes, 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 right? And the person who broke that culture was Muhammad Ali, right? When he was asked to go to Vietnam to fight, he said, no, I'm not going to go, right? <laughs> and he broke that culture in the US and that been spread in many other countries. So that's what you want as a researcher. You cannot simply think everything granted. You just you start questioning why, you know, questioning how, when, where, sort of questioning has to be there. Why? Because you would like to see some kind of solution to a problem. So this is problem is something uh, existing that requires solution, meaning that something is already there and yet it requires solutions. Okay, say for example, I've given an example here, complaint of harassment by senior officer. It's very common, right? Or worldwide. Harassment is very common. Uh, either female boss or male boss, harassment is very common. Specific areas in the organization require improvement. Meaning that, say for example, in an organization, you have harassment and you have policies, but that policies are not enough. That policies are not enough. So you need, you need some kind of policies, okay? So that the problem can be resolved, okay? So while you are having policies there and still harassment exists and genuine complaint is still occur, Theoretical conceptual issue needs tightening up. So the, the definition of harassment even not very clear. What constitute a harassment? Uh, is a verbal abuse a harassment? Uh, is, is, is a funny joke uh, considered as harassment from, by male colleague to female or female colleague to male? So there are many kind of definition there and different people have different feeling of what is harassment. So you may do a research to tightening up, the, to tighten up the, the definition of harassment itself. Okay, so you are now moving into concept. Or is this question that basic researcher needs to answer empirically? So now we are going to look at what are the impacts of this harassment. Harassment is there, but does it affect the performance of an organization? Does it affect the productivity? Does it affect the effectiveness? Does it affect the efficiency of an organization? So. In many cases, if, if harassment is there, but it doesn't affect the performance of an organization, then researchers may not be willing to do a research because it's not impactful. It's somehow not really affecting significantly. That's the word we use, right? Significant, <laughs> something got to be significant. So that's how research problem is defined and looked at, identified. Huh? So you're looking at harassment, and you keep questioning, you keep questioning. Is there any policy? Yes, there are policies. It's still happening? Yes, it's still happening. So what are the definition of your harassment? There's so many different uh, employees coming and complaining and different people have different nature of complaint. So by research, you talk to people, you collect data and you define what is actually defined in harassment. And then you are looking at what is more important for social science research as we do, you are looking at whether the harassment is affecting uh, the performance of an organization. Now, uh, so what is a research problem? So we say that a research problem is an issue or concern that investigator presents and justifies in a research study. So you're looking at a concern and issue. Huh? A problem that someone would like to research, anything that a person find unsatisfactory or unsetting, a difficulty of some sort, a state of affairs that need to be changed. So that's how we are defining the research problem. And the problem involves in the areas of concerns to researchers for conditions they want to improve, difficulties they want to eliminate, questions for which they want to seek answers. Okay. 
So when you are undertaking research, uh, when you say uh, most of the time, you know, that's the problem we see with the candidates in the final Bible verse. Even though the candidate has gone through proposal defense, the candidate has gone through uh, P viva, and in the final viva, when examiners ask the student to explain what is your problem, and I we find many students cannot really uh, provide satisfactory answers of the research problem they undertook. You know, the research problem they identified and defined to undertake a research. Now. Um, some more, uh, you know, clear definition of research problem. We say it's a clear definite, a clear expression about an area of concern, a condition to be improved upon, a difficulty to be eliminated, troubling question that exists in the literature. Existing practice points, uh, you know, uh, solutions to uh, points a solution, uh, you no know, find need, needed a solution, a question that researchers wants to answer. Or a problem that researchers want to solve. Okay, so it is basically a research problem identification is like identification of destination before undertaking the journey. So without research problem, you cannot proceed. You got to have a problem. Got to be identified. Uh, research got to a problem. Got to be identified before you undertake the research. Okay, it's similar like when you are traveling. You got to have a destination. You cannot simply just come out from the house and drive. You do not know where to go. So if you are thinking of doing a research, so that's how it is. A research problem got to be identified and properly defined. Now, um, you may start uh, thinking of something. So it comes from your own conscious, subconscious mind, right? So intuition. So you think of something, uh, something going on, something is wrong. You have a feeling that something is not right, something is wrong. That comes from your intuition, the intuition, uh, based on the way you have been brought up, the way you have been educated, the way you have been brought up in the family, your networking and socialization of people, your working environment gives you some clue that something is not good, something is not right. So that's where you will start, intuition, uh, intuition. that's why you start. And then we, what do you do? Uh, with intention, then we experience it. It become better. So you understand something is wrong, and I experience it is happening now. So what do you do now? After that, we do little research. We do little reading of research papers or books or any other materials where I can uh, try to figure out what is wrong, why it is happening. Is there any answers for these issues and uh, these issues and all that? Okay. So you start with intuition from your 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 own thinking, from your conscious subconscious mind. And then you experience it a bit, and then you do little research, and then what you do, you consult with people who has the authority. So the similar example that I have given you, if you are looking at sexual harassment, say for example, uh, Ali I just say harassment. Now it become very specific, sexual harassment. So when you are working, and uh, you see uh, that people are talking about it. Some people are talking about it, and then while you are working, suddenly you experience it. You have seen some people are doing it. And uh, or you see your your friend or colleagues are complaining about it, or you have experienced it. Your boss, uh, different sex, uh, you know, different gender boss, uh, somehow uh, harassed you. So you experience it. So when you see that, then you continue doing little research, reading papers and reading books and all that related to harassment, and you see what is being done and why is this happening? Why people do that? And there are many questions that you have in mind you try to identify. And once you have that concerns those queries that you get by reading papers and all that to confirm it you consult with people with authority so people from industry people from academia that's what you got to consult with that helps you to identify you know we have identified and then now that helps you to define your research problem properly okay now why it is so important uh, to to define research problem uh, as you say that a problem well defined is half solved, right? Uh, same like Einstein said, right? Formulation is more important than the solution. So how the problem is framed determine what solution you are going to obtain, right? Research problem drives subsequent stages of research process, and the proper problem definition ensures research result will meet decision makers' objectives. So once research problem is defined properly. It will show you the later stages 
whether your research is going to be a qualitative or quantitative, or whether you are going to take deductive approach or inductive approach, whether you are going to follow, you know, uh, uh, what kind of analysis and all that. Research problem itself uh, should be able, you know, to provide that kind of guidance if it is clearly identified and defined properly. Okay. Now, um, again, why it is so important? Because it establishes the importance of the topic. I'm going to show you some example. How should you write? How should you write the research problem or problem statement? And that's why I'm going to show this to you. Establishes the importance of the topic. It creates readers' interest, focusing on readers' in, in, attention on how the study will add study. to the literature. So, it when you write research problem, it, the way you write it. People think that, oh, this topic is very interesting, very important, very relevant, very useful, very related to us, you know, so he feels like reading more. So it creates reader's interest. So when it creates reader's interest and he reads and he read more after that, he has to feel that this research is going to add something to the literature. I'm going to learn something new from this research. That feeling has to be there by reading the research problem of the statement of the problem okay so itself will, will will tell you that if if you fail to write that way you bound to have a lot of problem during the final viable even starting from proposal defense you will encounter a lot of issues and problems if you fail to identify and define research problem correctly now you got to justify a research problem right so when i say harassment then I have to justify, I cannot simply just say that I know some harassments are taking place. I cannot do that, you know, or I have experienced it. By doing that also, I cannot justify. Okay? <laughs> so justification got to be based on what other researchers have found. That's number one. Your justification of research problem, your identification definition, especially definition, identification could be from your own, but the definition has to be done by using previous researchers' materials. That's number one. Like number two, justification based on your personal or workplace experiences. So you have your, your, your justification based on previous research. And then after that, your justification based on your own experiences. So workplace in experience. It doesn't have to be your personal. It could be just workplace experiences, getting from colleagues and friends and all that. And then Justification based on experiences that others have had in the workplace, right? So, the number two and number three, it must be guided by some statistical data. That's very important. Huh? Uh, we see many times in the final Bible, we say students, they have a lot of support from literature to define the research problem, but they do not have sufficient support from the industry. So you need to have some kind of statistical data supporting that is happening. Okay, so if you type the harassment as your topic, I will keep similar, you know, same topic for the whole talk, so that is easier for you to understand rather than switching different topics. So if you are talking about doing harassment, you know it is it is it is prevalent in every society, every country, every industry. Harassment is there. Okay, and when you research literature, you find a lot of evidence, a lot of studies being done. So you now justify with experiences of yourself or you know, in the workplace and then you have to have data from workplace harassment, so which are available in many syndicated sources where you can collect the data, statistical data. Okay. Now, um, once you identify and try to define the research problem, that immediately after that, you have to proceed to the next stage. You have to locate the research problem. Okay. Uh, so, by opening uh, uh, remarks, uh, opening paragraphs itself, uh, we need to have uh, this, this answers of this question. Uh, what is the issue or problem? What controversy uh, leads to the need of a study? That, that creates interest of the people, right? Uh, what concern is being addressed behind the study? Is there a sentence as like the problem being addressed in this study is, you know, dot, dot, dot. That's how we start at the beginning of writing. So you have to locate the research problem itself from the very beginning. Like every movie that you watch, at the beginning, they will show this, you know, they will create the plot for the movie. If you like it, you continue watching it. If you don't like the plot, you will just switch it off. 
a research problem is like that is that important if you are good in identifying and defining it then people will feel like it's something of very importance something very significant the finding is good to, good to, good to, going to help us a lot it is going to solve the problem that we see and face you know that kind of things got to be there okay uh, i'm sorry i cannot allow you to annotate because that will disturb the flow huh? i'm sorry i have to decline it okay now um determining whether a research problem should be researched now remember earlier i said there are many problems out there but not all problem require research not all problem warrants research okay there are certain specific problem there that is affecting society industry and all that and we have to undertake research so we have to ask ourselves i put two questions only in the red and under that i have sub sub questions can we or can you study the problem that's the first question Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Can you please unmute? Unmute, unmute. Okay, I have. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can someone respond, please? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Prof can hear you. Because I was muted. Oh, okay. So, can we study the problem? Can we study the problem? Do we have access to the research site? Do we have the access? Say, for example, uh, you have evidence of sexual harassment in the manufacturing industry somewhere. Do we have the access to the site? That's the first question. Will you be able to collect the data? Do we have the time, resources, and skills to carry out the research? It's the next question that you got to ask. Yeah? So now you are looking back at yourself, your abilities, your uh, your resources, your capabilities, your competence. You know, you are looking at that. Uh, many times, students, especially uh, I see in my university, undergraduate student will come and see me because I'm uh, in finance, right? So we don't have finance if we specialize degree. So many of them will ask me and say, Prof, can you supervise me? I say, what do you have to do? He say, I'm going to do research in finance. I said, how many finance subjects have you taken? <laughs> That's one, the principle of finance. So with that, can you do research in finance? Definitely not, right? So I say, no, you should be rather focusing in marketing and management. You, you, you don't have to do research with me because you like me. Okay. <laughs> That's not the way of looking at it. Rather, you have to look at your skills, your competence, your ability, your capability. All those got to be carefully uh, analyze before you undertake a topic to do a research okay now the next question is should we study the problem the problem is there should we study does it advance the knowledge that is the most important question that you have to ask yourself if you are doing phd you will be struggling you'll be waiting to answer this question does it advance knowledge is there anything new Okay, is there anything new? <laughs> uh, I remember, I think in some of my webinars, I do mention it. Uh, I was sharing a session, I asked a student, uh, that's what the last question I asked all the students. Uh, Tell me why you should be given the PhD degree. So a student was, one a student was answering me like that. He said, Prof, I have studied five years. I spend eight to 10 hours a day, you know? Uh, I, I you know I spend money, I spend time and all that. I say, uh, do you think because of that you should be given a PhD? You say yes. <laughs> so I asked him back a question. I said, then a taxi driver diving taxi for 20 years and 15 hours a day, should he give him a PhD for taxi diving? And he keep quiet. He doesn't answer me. I say, your answer is like that. Your PhD is given not because you study five, five years and uh, 10 to 12 hours and all that. You have to prove that you are contributing something new to the body of knowledge. That's what is important. Huh? So when you are identifying and defending a research problem, you have to ask yourself, does it advance knowledge? Does it contribute to the practice? That's what the two most important elements that you look at. A PhD is given for either one contribution. Huh? Number one, theoretical contribution, new knowledge contribution. Number two, practical, contextual contribution. And number three, methodological contribution. 
Okay, in most of our research, methodological contributions are very, very insignificant. So most of the time we try, we try to work with new knowledge contribution and practical contribution, which are much easier compared to methodological contribution. So whether your research problem is identified and defined properly, you have to ask question to yourself. Should I, you know, study this problem? Should, you know, uh, I study this problem? And you have sub questions there that will clarify your mind, so whether you should undertake this research or not. There's some other questions is still there. For example, like, will you study, uh, will you always study, fill uh, a gap or void in the existing literature? Is, is there any gap and you would like to fill up the gap? Or the knowledge is there and you are going to prove that that knowledge is not correct. It's not implementable. It's not useful anymore, become obsolete already. That can be also uh, uh, done by research. Will you always study replicate part study, but examine different participants and different research sites? And that's what most of you will argue uh, most of the time. Uh, you, you will argue that uh, research, uh, thousands of research have been uh, undertaken worldwide, but in my country context, in that industry, this research has not been undertaken. This theory has not been tested in that industry or that specific country, you know? Uh, so you look at that. I'm going to show you some example later. Will your study extend the past research or examine the topic more thoroughly? So possibly you can conclude that researchers uh, conducted this study and uh, does not provide conclusive, conclusive solution to the problem. So that requires a problem, uh, a research. So that is the research gap you're finding out, right? Will your study give voice to the people not heard, silenced, or rejected in society? So this is something uh, not many of us will do, okay? Uh, we have to voice out concerns of people who are not given priority in the society. And that can be also a good area where it can be uh, undertaken, you know, research can be undertaken. So this is how a research flows uh, from very general to specific an example. Say, for example, you are looking at distance learning. This is the topic. Research problem, lack of students in the distance classes, purpose, and then you have research questions. So I have a specific question there from very, you know, beginning, very general up to very specific. So your topic is a very general one. Then you narrow it down a bit, become research problem. Then you translate it into research purpose and research question very specific, whereby you will have the answers to it. Okay. This is another example, very general to specific. For say, for example, the topic is corruption. corruption. So your research topic is corruption. Research problem is corruption in government. Very common in the world. The purpose to study why corruption is evidence in government today. Why? That is your purpose. And research question is, does the use of social media help to expose corruption in government today? So you start with general topic, corruption, research problem, corruption in the government, very specific. And then you go more specific and you go for more specific. So at the end, you are looking at whether you are exposing because government in corruption, how to expose it? That's social media help. So your research question is there. So that's how it flows down from a general topic to very specific topic to conduct a research. Now, how to get started? I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, basically, we'll start with uh, who, what, where, when, and uh, why questions, okay? So I'm not going to explain much, I'll leave it. As I said that uh, we will share the slide with you, so uh, you may go through uh, a little, okay? These are the simple things that you look at. Okay. These are the some criteria that um, you can evaluate whether your research problem is defined properly or not. The first question is whether the problem is researchable. Uh, there are many good topics available. Uh, you know, uh, many times students come to see us and they propose certain topics. And after discussion, when you continue asking question and more question and more question, and then we we tell the student this is not researchable topic. Okay, it, it looks to be very lucrative, very attractive, very interesting topic, but yet. It is not accessible, unfortunately. Why? Data is not available. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a student doing PhD with me now. Uh, I'm not sure whether he's online with me now. Uh, he's doing a research on FinTech. 
and uh, financial technology, right? The latest one. Uh, and he, he had something in mind. And then after uh, one month of studying, he came back to me and said, Prop, I have to change a bit of my title and topic. Uh, I said, why? He said, uh, we can't get uh, uh, the data that is required. Okay. So at the beginning, uh, you got to look at, because if you cannot collect the data, the data is not available, then it's not accessible. It's not accessible. Okay. So the first question is whether the problem is accessible. Sorry, excuse me. Whether the problem is important. Remember earlier I said at the beginning, uh, there are many problems, but not all problems are important. Not all problems require solutions. Not all problems warrants uh, research. Okay, so we have to see whether how important it is. Uh, when you have defined uh, the problem, then it should indicate what kind of research you are going to undertake. Uh, a good definition of research problem will provide uh, or guide provide guidance for subsequent stages of research. Problem is specified the population definitely, right? You have to locate your problem. Remember earlier I said you have to locate the problem. So the root of the problem, where the problem is rooted, that got to be identified from the very beginning so that the data is collected from there, okay? So you have to collect the data from where, where it is rooted. And problem is specified the variables. Um, and that's the reason uh, I always uh, recommend, uh, suggest my students, to write chapter two first, literature review, and then after that proceed to chapter three, uh, literature review, sorry, research methodology. Then only I ask them to write chapter one, introduction, <laughs> because in introduction you are writing research problem. So at the beginning, uh, research problem, research question, research objective, significance, all that in chapter one. So if you do not do literature review, how can you uh, define a research problem? So you do chapter two first. So after doing chapter two, you may come back to one, but even personally, I prefer after two, you proceed to three, then one day after that, you write one, okay? So in the research problem, when you write, it should also specify the variable, meaning remember that a problem is affected by many issues. Many issues contribute to a research problem. Say, for example, if we take the example of harassment that I have started the example today, why harassment takes place? So there are many issues. Gender issues is there, right? Character morality issues is there. Uh, power authority, the issues are there. So there are many issues there. So those three, four, five issues contribute to the problem. So your research problem in the dependent variable. And the issues that we talk about are the independent variables. Okay? And in between, if there are many, you know, the moderating, mediating, which I'm going to talk about today, don't worry. So those variables should be should be already identified and discussed in the research problem itself uh, itself be, be very clear on it uh. issues got to be clarified in the research problem and that's why when you go to proposal defense or final viva i often see many examiners asking students the question of what are the issues tell me the issues <laughs> very common right i'm very sure you have experienced it examiners will ask you this question tell me the issues tell me the issues what are the issues <laughs> So if you identify the issues correctly, variables correctly, you can easily answer these are the issues and that contribute to the problem. Okay, this is problem and these are the issues. Okay, I'm going to show you a, a plot to, uh, to, 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 you know, the, the, where you can put, you know, a template where you can plot uh, this is problem in the template. Now let us look at sources of research problem. In its, uh, uh, an academic research, basically, uh, the sources of problems coming from theory, theory or knowledge, right? Um, practical or contextual issues, and the other one is methodological issues. So, research problem basically comes from these three. Okay. Now, uh, when it comes to knowledge or theoretical gaps, so there are many uh, we can look at. Okay. So these these are the few we can we can look at. Uh, there are theories available, but those theories are. Uh, are not applicable in the society, so we can nullify them. So there's a gap. A theory is there, but become up, outdated. But people still use it. Nobody knows that it doesn't work anymore. So we have to do a research to prove this theory is outdated. This theory is no more useful. So we nullify a theory. So that is a gap. You got to prove a theory wrong. Okay, modifying a theory. Theory is there, but needs some modification. All right, like uh, coronavirus. Now we have now COVID-19. This is coronavirus number three. We had one and two before, so we do have vaccines for that. But now we need to modify those, right? That's what they have done now, scientists. 
based on the vaccine that we have for corona number two being modified and now we are having the vaccine for coronavirus number three that we have now okay so you're modifying the theory or you can extend the theory okay or even you can um integrate theories you find that one theory is not enough say for example you're talking about harassman theories are there and one theory is not enough different theory explained differently so what do you do you combine a few theories together integrate them and come out with a new framework integrated framework and you do a research okay so your research framework is being proposed by using few theories so theories are integrated okay theories are integrated or you may validate a theory validating theory is you are testing data with the statistical sorry you are testing theory with the statistical data that's what you call validating you validate with statistical data whether the truth exists or not right or even you can test the effectiveness of a theory if you do that this all are contribution or like these all are the gaps can be identified and later on your contribution comes from here so you're contributing new knowledge and you are getting your phd degree okay or even you can verify a theory right okay uh methodological issues are, are there could be many few i have uh, uh, put it in the slide the purpose methodology uh say most of the past research they use qualitative study but you want to do quantitative but most of them use quantitative you want to do qualitative but most of the studies either qualitative or quantitative then you want to do mixed approach quantitative with qualitative or triangulation okay new methodology can be used so that is a contribution Testing a, a, a proposed methodology in new context, a methodology has been tested somewhere, but you want to test in your place, right? Uh, integration or triangulation, I've explained. You develop new instrument. Uh, instrument could be uh, for the uh, for the interview, or it could be for survey, right? Or a validating okay. instrument okay. being developed uh, into a new context, all right? That could be also a new contribution. So there could be always gap, you know? These are the five areas that I've shown. There could be many areas where you can easily identify the gap, the issues Hello? affecting the problem that you have identified. And that helps you to define it properly. And the last one, basically, we look at industrial and contextual issues. So when you see something new arise with COVID-19, there's so many new industrial issues already there. And trust me, uh, when you come back to the next normal, huh, we had uh, old normal and new normal, and now we talk about next normal. <laughs> We do not know. We are still in new normal. We do not know how the new normal, the next normal going to be. We do not know yet. So we know the new normal, how it is. We are being locked down. We are inside the home for months after months. And uh, we have to follow certain SOPs given by the government and all that. We have to do it to save ourselves and the country. But what is important, once it is going to be managed, you are going to have next normal. How next normal going to be, nobody knows. Because the economy of the whole world is going to be collapsed. Uh, with that collapsed economy, to reviving the economy and uh, coming back to you know, the normal would be very challenging. We do not know yet. So that will give you a lot of room to do research. Okay. So new issues would be there a lot, and we have to focus on it. And together with fourth industrial uh, revolution, a lot of technological advancement, all that, creating havoc in our life, changing everything, the way we do things, the way we... Uh, lead our life the way we mingle around with people, the way you socialize, the way you network with people. Everything is changing because of fourth industrial revolution, the advancements of new technology and all that. Okay. Most of the purchases that we do now uh, online, right? <laughs> Last one year, uh, I, I I remember I think most of the things that I bought, almost eighty percent thing that I bought was from online, and I found the online things are cheaper and better quality than I buy from the shops even. Okay, so the life has been changed. So I'm not withdrawing money from the bank. I'm just paying online transfer, right? <laughs> Using my credit card. So it, it has changed. You know, there are many, these are the simple examples that you look at. I don't go to the clinic to get my uh, medicine. Huh? I, I don't go. Uh, last six months. I just call the clinic and uh, the clinic will send the medicine to my house. I don't go. Huh? I, possibly I'm one of the fortunate person in my town. The clinic will send the medi medicine to my house. I don't go. Uh, even uh, the doctor said, if you come to the clinic, you don't have to come inside the clinic. You stay in the car. I will go and see you there. So that's happening in, 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 in everywhere. That's happening, right? Drive through clinic. And uh, now it's possible, right? We had 
dive through uh, uh, KFC and McDonald's. We have seen that before. We have been so used to now. We have dived through COVID testing. We have dived through clinic and dived through hospitals. You're going to be there. And we will have doctors on call. Doctors will be coming at home rather than we go to the doctor. So those things are new issues, you know, will give you room, uh, a lot of room. Changing mindsets, uh, problem reoccur and all that also, uh, sorry, uh, there. So these are the few that I have put it there, but there could be many industrial issues are there. I have talked about it few before. Uh, for example, like policies are there, but not enough. Policies are there, but not effective. Policies are there, but not adequate. And uh, no all sort of thing that you look at and, and we see policies in different industry where they can you apply in another industry. So those gives you areas, the gaps for you to continue uh, doing research. Now, how do we identify and uh, define research problem? There are many different ways of looking at it. You can consult with experts, your personal experiences, your practical experiences, critical review of literature. Uh, you look at the folklore, you know, the way um, the things are done, uh, the way people live, uh, the cultures and and all that in, in the society, right? The folklore uh, gives you a lot of room to identify uh, problems. Uh, through brainstorming, of course, uh, that's what you do, right? Um, uh, if you have a good supervisor, uh, that's, that's what every time will be done, brainstorming. I read papers, you come and sit down with the supervisor and you have debate, you talk and you debate and you argue and you have to sustain with the argument. That's what is important. So it is your research, not your supervisor research. Uh, please do not expect your supervisor to tell you, uh, okay, this is what you are going to do. No, it should be you to tell your supervisor, this is what I'm going to do. Why? Because I read this and I found this and all that, you know. So you have all that mind, reading previous research and then you are doing brainstorming together with your supervisor and finalizing your topic, all right? That's how it should be, that's how it should be. Then your life would be smooth. Uh, and your defense during the proposal defense of final Bible would be easier if it works that way. Huh? Unfortunately, there are students who expect the supervisors to spoon feed them, which is not right. PhD is an independent research. Please remember that. It is an independent research. It is your work. You have to do it. Supervisor will just provide guidance. That's it. Uh, those days are gone. Supervisor will download a paper and give it to you and ask you to read and come back to me. No. You would be reading paper and coming and updating the supervisor. Okay, <laughs> you'll be updating the supervisor, telling I read a new paper, you know, Prof, I read a new paper and this is what is it. And so, oh yeah, I didn't read that paper. Oh, something very interesting. Okay, share me the paper. That's how it should be, you know. You should be updated than the supervisors. You should be updating the supervisors. Then your life would be smooth uh, 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 during the journey. Existing theories and uh, social issues and uh, exposed to that could yeah. be many. There could be many other different uh, uh, ways of looking at it. I have put quite quite good number of here, which you can uh, take into you know, account and think of it to identify and define a research problem. As I said, uh, once you you are staying inside the house, you still you have many problems, and once you just cross the door of your house, you have many other problems. So all problems are that you got to be inquisitive and look at whether that problem affecting us or affecting the society, affecting an industry, affecting the country. And that requires some kind of solution that warrants some kind of solution. Then we undertake that problem to conduct the research. Now, uh, how do we identify? We search for a problem, right? We search for a problem, we read more and then take notes, keep consulting with journals, seek professional advice, Keep the topic interesting. Huh? So these are the some uh, things uh, which I don't think I have to uh, discuss more. Huh? Now, um, problem identification and definition, what to do? Huh? I say what to do. Uh, basically, you follow a general procedure. Uh, what is the procedure? You identify the research situ problem situation, study the available research, write a statement identifying, defining the problem, consult with colleagues, academics or industry experts, and incorporate their inputs into your research. This is a very simple procedure or guideline given to you. Uh, could be very useful. Once you identify a problem situation, then we start looking at reviewing papers. Right? That's what we do. We, we download papers, we, we look for papers, we review them, we understand them. And from there, we identify the research gap, then we start writing. We start writing, right? We start writing. So while you do the first draft, uh, do not leave it there. Uh, keep it with yourself. Consult. Consult with people. Consult with people. Consult with colleagues, with friends, 
uh, academic uh, supervisors uh, or any other academics. It doesn't have to be your supervisor alone. There could be many other academic could be better than your supervisor. Talk to people. Go to industry. Talk to the managers who are handling and dealing with this problem. Get some input from them. All right, and that help you to really define research problem correctly. Remember, a research problem should be defined with two elements. One is academic gap, research gap, literature gap. The other one is the supporting data or evidence from the industry. These two has to come together. Then only your research problem will be identified and defined properly. Yeah? Please remember that. Now, this is something, uh, uh, the steps that I put it. Uh, so you outline the, your interest, then you choose a topic, uh, you narrow down your topic, you identify the research problem, you identify your purpose of the study, and then, sorry, uh, uh, you, 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 you have your research question afterwards. Now, uh, while you do this, uh, follow these stages, you have to keep certain uh, things in mind. I put it on the left and right. Uh, read, your, read about your interests, talk to your colleagues, find out what others are doing, you know. Um, then observe, um, you know, observe your environment. Uh, be curious, ask questions. So these six elements are there which helps you to follow the stages of research problem, okay? Identifying and defining research problem. This is another one process of uh, defining research problem given by, uh, I'm taken from a book, so I, I can't remember at this moment, I'm sorry. Understand the business situation uh, with key symptoms, okay? Identify uh, or isolate the problem from the symptoms. So this is very important. Huh? When you are not feeling well, you are unhealthy, that is the problem. You feel pain. You feel you under something not good with you, right? So what are the symptoms? If you are having runny nose, you are having cough, you are having fever, you are having body ache, you are having diarrhea. There are many, so many things happen with you, can happen with your body. So that makes you unwell. So those are the issues. Those are the issues. What is the problem? You are not healthy. You are not healthy. So we have to separate, isolate problem from the issues. That's very important. Huh? Right? If the problem is uh, uh, um, harassment, then what contributes to the harassment? Uh, well, whether the harassment contributing to the performance and organization, that's what I have explained earlier. Then we write a statement and then we look at uh, unit of analysis. In need of analysis is the unit that is analyzed. The data, where does the data come from? That is the need of analysis. If the problem affecting employees, so the need of analysis employees. If the problem is affecting the organization, you need of analysis is organization and so on. Huh? And you determine the relevant variables. Remember I said earlier, the research problem itself should be able to identify variables already. Okay, and then you state your research question and objectives. When you have independent, dependent variable identified, research questions are very easy. First research question, one independent variable to another, the dependent variable. Second research question, second independent variable to dependent variable. Then it continues, okay? Or you put all independent variable into dependent variable as one question. And then independent variable to the dependent variable in between, you have moderating or mediating. So you have all those variables are there and easily you can write the research questions or research objectives. Well, I do see some questions uh, in the comments, uh, but don't worry, uh, we will have question and answer session. We'll take some questions. And as I said earlier, the slides should be shared with you. So don't worry, you don't have to write so many times. Okay. All right. Now, while you are doing research, ask yourself. Ask yourself some questions. Ask yourself some questions. To help identify your business problem for your teachers. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure why is equate suddenly. Uh, kindly, can you please uh, mute your microphone? Some of your microphone is on. Please mute the microphone. Please mute microphone. Uh, excuse me, brother, brother Adi Sigun. Can you please mute your microphone? Thank you. Thank you. All right. So what are the questions should you be asking yourself? What was the issue or problem you want to study? What is the concern being addressed behind this study? Why do we want to undertake this study? Why is this study important to scholarly community? So these are the few questions that will be very helpful. Huh? If you have answers to these four questions, good answers to these four questions, you will have 
identify it and define your research problem correctly. Now, these are some guidelines that I'm going to give you um, to identify a research topic or to define a research problem. Number one, the research problem must be chosen by the researcher. It doesn't have to be chosen by supervisor, no. You should be, you should be, the researcher should be choosing his own topic, okay, research problem. Research problem must be within the interest of the research. You must have interest in the area, otherwise you'll be suffering. Research is not something very simple thing to do. It requires a lot of efforts, a lot of hard work, a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of, lot of, lot of, a uh, lot of things. <laughs> so you have to be, it has to be something very interesting so that you feel like you are doing something very well and you have to take it like very interesting things that you are going to do. Like if you are going to travel somewhere, he will feel the excitement if you know that place is going to be an exciting place, something interesting place. And if you know you are traveling because uh, there's something, something boring thing that you are going to do, definitely it's not going to be something enjoying, uh, something exciting. So research area got to be something of your interest. You have to be very careful when you identify that. Problem must be within the specialization of the researcher. So now you've got to look at yourself, the kind of specialization you have. If I have done my master's and uh, honors in marketing, and then I want to do PhD in finance, that's impossible. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, if I have done my master's and honors in accounting and finance, and then I want to do research in IT, it's impossible. <laughs> okay. So that's what is very important. Your specialization got to be taken care of. The topic, the topic, the topic should be something, something related to your specialization. The researcher must be able, the research problem must be manageable, feasible, and researchable. I think it's very clear. I don't spend time because I still got many slides to go. Huh? The researcher must have capability and ability to finance. Huh? Finance. Uh, research involves uh, money, huh? a lot of money, actually. If you are doing PhD in different universities, you've got to pay tuition fee for so many years. Uh, if you're doing own research uh, to come out with the paper, even still, it involves money, collecting data and many other things where it involves money. Um, research, uh, the research problem must be completed within the period determined. Uh, remember, if you are doing PhD, the minimum is two years, maximum is about five years. It can be extended to one, two years, depending on the institutions where uh, you are in. Okay. So if you choose a very broad area, comprehensive area, and it is not manageable within the time frame, two years or three years or four years, five years, then you are in trouble. So you've got to be very careful on selecting the topic. Make sure the topic is such narrowed down so that you can finish within the stipulated time given to you. The research problem must be within the competence. Huh? It's understood. The research problem must be significant, relevant, and important. And I put in the red mark to the present time as well as to the future, as well to the future, right? The research topic that you're doing now, remember when you're undertaking research, it takes three to four years to finish. Make sure when you finish, it's still it is relevant. It's still something new. It is still something updated. Okay. Otherwise, when you go to proposal defense and uh, sorry, final viva voce, and then you'll be struggling to show that your findings is current, is current, something updated, something new, something new. It's very important. Huh? So most of the time, what we do, we focus on present and we tend to forget that my study would be completed <laughs> only after three years or four years so we have to be a bit futuristic you know we have to read uh, somehow the future after four years or five years is my study is still going to be relevant is my study is still going to be new is my study going to be contributing to the new knowledge or something uh, practical uh, uh, in the context and all that got to be very careful and the last one is very important. The result of this study must be practical and implementable. That's what is very important huh? because most of the time, uh, when you go to the industry, many industry people complain about PhD. They say PhD is just an academic degree. It doesn't help us, you know, not, nothing relevant to us. It's true, you know, many PhD studies are like that. It's so academic, the industry, they do not get any benefit at all. But why do you do the research then? You just want to publish a paper? 
and you want people to read and cite your paper, that's it. No, that shouldn't be the way of looking into research. He should be doing research to contribute to the society. The contribution should be multifolded. Of course, you publish a paper, you want citation, of course. But at the same time, when people read your paper and they cite you, they should be benefiting from the findings of your research. Okay, they should be benefiting. So that's very important. So when you have findings at the end of your thesis, when you have recommendations and conclusions, people can take things, you know, we, we say take home away, uh, uh, take home away uh, 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 things from your thesis so that they can go back, they can practice it, they can implement it, and they can be benefited from that. Uh, this one, I don't think I'm going to discuss a lot. Okay, so this is unit of analysis. I said this is basically the unit that you are going to analyze. This is basically where the data is coming from. Okay. Okay, this is an example of how it works. It's a very good one. Huh? Some of you, I think, uh, put question there. What is the research gap and what is literature gap and <laughs> all that. So please wait before you ask question because I have many slides to clarify many things with you. Okay. So look at the example and the topic, say, for example, I've given any topic here, ethical issues in colleges, research problem, ethical violations, meaning that you have ethics, you have ethics, you have policies, you have procedures, but it is violated, it is violated. So what is the gap? Justification of research problem, gap in the literature. Why they are violating? There's no answer in the, in the, in the theory. So there's a gap there. So people have done research on it, but there's no concrete conclusion on the topic. So there's a gap in the literature. And then you are getting reports from the industry. There are reports of violations. So you have literature gap and you have data from industry supporting the research gap that you found from the academic reading. These two comes together, it becomes research gap. Okay. Okay. I'm answering the question. Answering the question. I'm answering the I'm question. Answering the question. I so put it in so. the uh, uh, chat box. Uh, so your literature gap is part of the research gap. Your literature gap combined with the data evidence from the industry that makes it a research gap. Okay, that makes it a research gap. So ethical issues in the college was the topic research problem. There is a violation of ethical ethics. And then justification of the research problem, gap in the literature, there is no clear cut knowledge, theories that explain it. And you have data from the industry. And then deficiencies of the evidence, you say uh, identifying and characterizing violation. So uh, there's no clear identification and character kind of violations taking place, you see. And then you are relating it to the audience, assessing the violation, you are helping recruitment, right? Recruiters develop better ethical standards help athletes understand ethical issues. So these are going towards the end. You are identifying audience and you're collecting data. You are making conclusion and recommendations. That's how it goes on. Huh? I will have more, more, more examples. Don't worry. Say, for example, this is another example. I give it in a different way. Say, for example, you are talking to a storekeeper and the storekeeper says, uh, we have seen the decline in the patronage of our store. Not many visitors are coming. So the researcher says, how do you know that? Uh, the showkeeper says, well, it is reflected in our sales and market share. Okay, so the researcher then asks another question. Okay, why do you think your patronage has declined? And the shopkeeper said, I wish I knew. <laughs> Meaning the shopkeeper know his sales are declining, but he doesn't know why. Okay, so the researcher is asking the question, what about competition? So the shopkeeper answered, I suspect we are better than competitors on some factors and worse on some others. Okay. So the researchers say, how do the customer view a store? The shopkeeper said, I think most of them positively, most of them positively, although we may have a weak area in a weak area or two. So you can see here, here uh, as I said at the beginning, that researcher, you got to be inquisitive and you start asking questions. So you're going to your shopkeeper and you're asking him, how is your business? He say, what's well, okay, but I see there's a decline in sales. Uh, they are declining in number of visitors. And then you keep asking and you keep asking and you keep asking. At the end, you, you know, reach your conclusion that there is a problem. There is a problem. And then 
The question is, what should be done to improve the patronage of the store? So now there is a problem of declining of sales, and you have to do a study to come out with some kind of recommendations to come out with that kind of situation and to come back to the positive trend rather than declining is having increasing of number of visitors or patronage, right? So there are many different ways of looking at this. So there are some uh, I have uh, mentioned it here. But most important to me, you know, there are some, uh, some areas where students have the areas, potential areas of research that they do not know how to identify. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, say, for example, there was a case when a student was doing a study on companies that are doing very well. IT top 100 IT companies in, uh, uh, in, in the world. And then when she comes to the proposal defense, the examiners asked her, uh, what is the problem? And she struggled. She says, I cannot really find any problem uh, because uh, this organization performance, that was a dependent variable. Uh, so she feels that uh, these companies are doing well. So I want to do a study. And so why you want to do a study? If the companies are doing well, is there any need to do a study? And, and uh, she fails to, you know, show any problem. So, but she has written about 100 pages and uh, she got two very capable supervisors. So, it comes back, you know, so the supervisor says, okay, after the session, let me uh, prop him in. So, they came to see me and said, okay, let's sit down and talk. So, I asked the student, uh, why you want to do the study? He said, prof, actually, I want to measure uh, these companies, why they are so successful, we can top 10. I think uh, I'm, I say, are you going to look at uh, the success, critical success factors of the company? He said, not really. Then I start asking questions. Eh? I start asking her questions. I said, okay, those companies are top 100 this year. Were they all in top 100 last year? Then she said, no. I said, all right. I said, those companies in top 100 10 years before, how many of them are now in top 100? You say about 10? <laughs> So I started more questions and more questions. And finally, excuse me, there's an insect disturbing me. <clears throat> finally, I proved to her that there is a problem of sustainability of the organizations. They have been in the top 20 or top 50 or top 100, but then they cannot maintain it. So that's the research problem. Those at the top 100 10 years before, only 10 of them now. Those top 100 five years before, only 20 of them now. And those are top 100 now. After three years, there are no more uh, 50 of them there. Okay. So, this is how you should be critically looking into research problem. Okay. So, your mind got to be inquisitive. You got to keep asking questions. You got to keep asking questions. And then only you will reach to a situation whereby you will identify and define research problem correctly. Okay, now how do we write a research problem? Okay, now writing a statement of the problem. Uh, the research problem within the study, right? Uh, you will start with the research problem within the study, justification of the problem based on previous research, shortcoming of the previous research, uh, previous research, and the importance of significance of the problem, how it is affecting. That should be there in the statement of the problem. That makes it up like a good problem statement. Okay, I'm going to show you more example, don't worry. This is a practical example how you should be writing a research problem, okay? This is student. This is student, basically, uh, look at, you can still hear me, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes sir, we hear you. All right, thank, thank, thank you, because thank I you saw it coming, no, no voice. Thank you, thank you. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, this is student of mine, completed PhD, and this is, uh, these are the points that I have taken from his research problem right up. Huh? So he has identified these are the gaps. Dearth of research in emerging countries. He was from Nigeria. He said research has not been done in emerging economies. That's number one. Number two, contemporary study gave conflicting and inconclusive results. Hence, reaching a valid conclusion remains an elusive goal. So findings are not conclusive, inconclusive, and conflicting to some time. Limited studies on performance measures from value versus profitability. 
the link between financial risk, business risk, and firm value is only subject of few studies, only few. Prior studies suffer significant methodological limitations in, in, in applicability or irrelevance of findings in developing economies or in emerging economies. Inconsistency in the findings of prior studies. Empirical support for financial innovation is something he is introducing new totally. So he is combining all these into one study. So you can see it now. If you can put all these issues together in a research problem, I'm very sure you can see it now how beautifully research problem can be written. Okay. So you're highlighting the research gap and the gap from the industry with the evidence from the industry. And then you combine it together, that becomes research gap, and then you highlight it in the research problem. That's how it should be written. Okay. Now, I have given some example of how a statement of problem should be written. Uh, this is I'm not going to write. I'm not going to read. I'm sorry. Uh, when I share the slide, uh, uh, please look into uh, and, and, and make your mind how you should be proceeding to write your uh, problem statement. Huh? Now, this is uh, from Visa 2008. Uh, he has recommended that when you identify this as problem or define this as problem, look at from three aspects. One is content theme, uh, number two is knowledge type, and number three by analysis level, okay? Uh, sorry, I think my uh, presentation has got problem, right? Uh, okay. Oh, somebody is sharing, uh, Farah. Oh, sorry, Farah, uh, can you stop sharing, please? Farah is like, sharing, Farah. that's where the problem is. Um, can you see, see my slide? All right. Yes, Professor. All right. All yes. right. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank yes. you. Uh, once I present, others cannot really present. If you present, then I'll be out. <laughs> uh, okay. So Visa is advising that when we uh, write this is problem or define, we should go with content, knowledge type, and analysis level. So that's most of the time we'll tell, right? The students. Uh, knowledge type, theoretical, empirical, it should be there, and they should be having uh, some kind of, it's, you know, uh, analysis from the global perspective to regional, uh, finally coming back to your own country. Okay. <clears throat> this is an example given, which I'm not going to go through. Uh, following, this is uh, basically following a uh, visa's way. Eh? So by content theme, by uh, uh, empirical, and then you are looking at empirical again, the knowledge level, following by empirical again, you know, and then following by knowledge type, and then you have methodological, and finally you have theoretical. So that's how the example is there, which I'm going to leave it for you, okay? So for your own way of looking at it. This is something that I have come out and proposed uh, to the world. Huh? Many people have uh, appreciated. Uh, this is a template that I'm proposing. Uh, you can actually plot. Uh, issues into a template to show, highlight the research problem that you have identified. So, for example, this student is doing a study. I put the title at the top, right? Uh, effects of human resource management factors on organization performance of garments industry workplace safety as a moderator. So, his main problem is organization performance. That's a dependent variable. And his first issue is recruitment selection, second issue, training development, third issue, performance appraisal, and it goes on. Reward and uh, benefits is the fourth issues. So, state sub problem two workplace safety is a moderator. So I put it there. Now you can see here issue one, issue two, issue three, issue four. These all are independent variable. And main problem organization performance is a dependent variable. So while I'm concluding on definition of research problem, I'm straight taking it to the framework. That's what I'm how I'm connecting to this talk. Okay, and then this student has some other industrial issues. Dissatisfaction among the uh, labor or employees, labor strike, vandalism, employee turnover, those he has. So he has earlier academic issues here, and then later he has industrial issues together. So that makes it a strong research problem. This is another one, right? My, my PhD student, uh, financial risk, business risk, and finance uh, firm value, moderating uh, role of financial innovation. So the main problem is firm value. Firm value is declining, not consistent in Nigeria. So what are the issues he identified? He the credit risk, liquidity risk, operation risk, and so on. These all are each independent variables. 
and I put sub problem to financial innovation, moderating variable. Okay, and then he does have practical issues, high non-performing loans, weak liquidity, high level of fraud, and all so on. So he has uh, academic issues. You know, he has academic issues here, and then he continues with evidence from the industry. That makes it a research gap, and that's what I said. You have literature gap and you have industrial gap coming together makes it a research gap a research problem with issues all right all right so i continue with the next one i'm moving into the framework huh? so that's uh, what uh, uh, charles uh, catherine said he said high achievement always takes place in the framework of high risk expectation so when you develop your research framework make sure you have something uh, of uh, with high expectation you want to contribute something you have to contribute something new knowledge or new practices and all that now before i move to theoretical framework uh, quickly i go through this categories of research are basically qualitative and quantitative but again you may have um, the mix uh, method also right uh, so research basically start with qualitative and then we validate it quantitative and that continues okay that continues quantitative research basically we just uh, later, I will show you in the research philosophy. We try to prove what has been proposed by qualitative study. We test what is being proposed. Huh? Qualitative study ends up with assumption and theory. And quantitative study will test hypothesis and prove that theory, validate the theory, validate, uh, ver verify that theory, nullify that theory. Those all will be done by basically quantitative studies. And then we may do uh, triangulation and all that. Now, this is something very important uh, in Asia. I think most students they miss this. Research paradigm or research philosophy. Yeah? When you do a PhD, is basically doctor of philosophy. It's not uh, it's, it's, it's not doctor of finance or doctor of marketing. Uh, it's basically uh, doctor of philosophy. So philosophical uh, underpinning must be there. So once you do theoretical framework, you will have theoretical underpinning. But unfortunately, most of the cases we do not see the philosophical underpinning of a research. So that's what I would like to show a bit to you. Okay. There are two terms that you got to understand. One is ontology, other one is epistemology. Ontology is basically finding out the truth. You know there is a problem. Now we want to prove whether this is true. It is happening. This is really happening. There's so many policies there. It still it is happening. For example, like harassment, the example I studied from the beginning. There's so many rules and regulations. Almost every country, and it's still harassment taking place. So is it really true? How far it is true? So that is ontology. Finding out the real, what is real, what is the truth. It could be more than it could be one truth, that there could be more than one truth. If one truth, we call it realist. If more than one truth, we call it relativist ontology. Okay. And epistemology is knowing exactly what is happening, the truth, the reality of something. Okay. The reality of a problem. Knowing that is called epistemology. You start with the knowledge. Okay. Epistemology. So that's how a research flows. We start with uh, ontology and uh, you know what is reality and then uh, what and how can i find the reality that's knowledge epistemology the theoretical perspective what approach to be taken methodology what procedures to be taken and so on okay now um when you undertake research our research will fall either one of these categories there are four there are four categories uh, either we fall into positivism whereby uh, we conduct deductive approach and quantitative study find out only one truth we accept or reject hypothesis. Post positivism, we find out more than one truth using quantitative study, deductive approach. Or we more we go more into deeper and deeper into a problem <clears throat> and we interpret it. That is interpretivism by using qualitative study. Or we go for constructivism. We construct hypothesis, construct a theory, double up a theory, also using qualitative study and inductive approach. I'm going to explain inductive and deductive approach later. So positivism and post-positivism, these two, basically, if we go through this philosophy, we will use deductive approach, we'll go for quantitative study. If you are going for interpretivism or constructivism, then we will follow qualitative and inductive approach, okay? So these are the <clears throat> approaches we have. The first one, we call it deductive approach. <clears throat> A deductive approach starts with theory. Then from the theory, we construct hypothesis. We collect data and finally accept or reject hypothesis. Okay, that's what it is. It's a deductive. We deduct from what we have. So we start with the theory and we end up with accepting or rejecting hypothesis. Okay, so 
we start from where the qualitative study ended. So this is definitely a quantitative study. We are following positivism or post-positivism, which you have to remember. Okay. <clears throat> so this is an, uh, an analogy I give always to understand it better. Deductive approach, I see basically you are landing in it. <laughs> Can you please unmute your microphone, brother? Sorry. Uh -huh. Muhammad Shuhel Mia, can you please can you please unmute your microphone? Shuhel Mia, can you please unmute your microphone, please? Shuhel, can you please mute your phone? Mute your mic, please. I'm a clean eye from one. Shoel, can you please mute your microphone? I'm a student. Hello, Shoel, can you please mute your microphone? If you've got listening, just push him out of the group. That's fine. Jamila, can you remove him? Push him out of the group. Can you please remove him? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I distressed the flow of my thinking even. <laughs> okay. I was with the deductive approach, so I'm saying that uh, you are landing in a beautiful garden. And then what do you do? You pick up the flower that you like. You won't take all the flowers. You won't like all the flowers. You pick up only those you like. So that is deductive approach. So you have a theory. You have many theories. You choose appropriate theories. And then from those theories, you pick up the variables. You choose the variables. You know, you choose the variables. So that is deductive approach. Like you are in a garden. Many flowers, you choose only those you like. Those are relevant, useful to you, related to you. That is called deductive approach, okay? Only two slides. I explained um, one hour lecture, okay? <laughs> That's basically one hour lecture. Only two slides. This is inductive. Also one hour lecture, I'm going to show you two slides. Very easy way of explaining. You observe the phenomena, you analyze the pattern, you formulate relationship. We come up with assumptions, not always theory. Inductive research is supposed to end up with a theory, but if you come out with a theory, you will get a Nobel Prize. <laughs> Not that easy, but we'll end up at least with some assumptions, okay? And those assumptions will be tested by quantitative study, by deductive approach. So that's the assumption I take, <coughs> analogy I give. You are landing on this soil ground, then you are preparing this, uh, the land for uh, planting a tree. You plant a tree, you fertilize it, you water it. And finally, you get the kind of flowers you wanted. Okay. So these are all the flowers that you like because these are the trees that you have planted. So that is inductive research. You start with zero and we end up with something totally new. Okay. Something that I expected. So if you are looking at harassment and issue and you want to undertake that research, if you follow deductive approach, you follow what are the theories available. You work with that. But if you follow inductive approach, you start from zero. You have some kind of understanding, perception of it, and then you follow uh, collecting data, and finally you uh, uh, conclude, you know, with uh, some kind of assumptions. <clears throat> so deductive is whereby you have everything there. From there, you choose, and then finally you make a conclusion. So that is relativism or post positivism or post positivism. You finding out the truth. What is the reality? Okay. But inductive approach is you are interpretivism or constructivism. You are interpreting, you're interpreting more and more, going deeper, or you're constructing something new. Okay. So that's how it is. So I leave it here because this is not my topic. <laughs> so okay, this is the jargon before I move to theoretical framework. Um, basically. Uh, what is the time now? 5.44. Okay. Can I take another half an hour upon Jamila? Yeah. And we have a lot of questions as well. After you finish, we can come back uh, to that. So I, I, I take half an hour. I, I speed up a bit. Uh, these topics are so important. So I have to take time to explain uh, because, okay. Uh, so in, in research, these are the jargon that we always use, the data, information, knowledge, and technology. Data are the raw facts and figure. And when we scan the data and make it useful, it becomes information. Data is available, but not all data are useful to me, relevant to me, not relevant to my research, not related to my research. So we scan it and get the right kind of data. That data, we call it information. Something useful become information. 
And when I have the position of that information, it becomes knowledge. When you say this, 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 this person is knowledgeable, meaning what? He has the position of some information that I don't have. Okay. And when I have the ability to apply the knowledge, it becomes technology. Please keep that in mind to clarify. I, I do as many times as students uh, to define what is data. They cannot really answer <laughs> what is information, cannot define. How do you define knowledge? Cannot define. So, the, so that problems are there. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Okay. What is theory? Theory is a Greek term. Basically, it's a proposition to be proved. Uh, some propositions and all that got to be proved. Huh? Uh, Zamila, can you please share the link uh, for participants to fill in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So a theory is a set of related statements that describe or you know explain phenomena in a systematic way. And many other definitions are there. Basically, a theory will show relationship between two or three or more variables. That's a theory, okay? So that's how we start. Huh? When, when, when we talk about theory, we start with ideas. And then from idea, we convert into concepts. Concept is something visible, you know, something... Uh, uh, ideas are something uh, uh, may not be, uh, uh, you know, understandable, may not be measurable. Uh, it's not something visible. So ideas, from idea, when you convert something that is at least, you know, visible, people can understand that, that it's something concept. And when that concept is measurable, we call it constructs. Okay, so constructs are similar to like variables, okay? And then when we assume relationship between constructs, it becomes propositions. And when propositions are put, it becomes theory. So these are the building blocks of a theory. Building blocks of a theory. So you start with the ideas, the concept, the construct, proposition theory. Oh. So those of you who are with me will do quantitative study. You will do theoretical framework. You will develop theoretical framework. But if you are doing qualitative study, you will develop conceptual framework. So after ideas, concept, that's where you stop. Qualitative study. And then you propose proposition. You end up your study. Okay? You start with concept, you end up with proposition. <laughs> Excuse me. But in a quantitative study, you study the theory and you end up with ideas. You give new ideas. You, you give new ideas, okay? Um, I think you just um, uh, give me one, uh, one minute. Uh, where do I go? Just, just give me uh, one minute. Uh, it's, it's...
Okay. <clears throat> While I was talking, um, something ran into my throat. I don't know what is that. Mosquito or something, uh, I do not know. So that's affecting my voice. <laughs> You need a little more time, bro. If you need me, maybe... I don't know what is it. Suddenly, I see something running into my throat because my mouth was open. I was talking. <laughs> Never happened. Uh, anyway, I have to continue. Yeah, if you need a, a little more time, like we can no, no, it's, take it's, it's it to. Right. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, all right. Uh, let me uh, continue. All right. So I have given you the definition of ideas, concepts, and construct and proposition theory. All that here. I don't think. I have explained it already. I don't have to. Now, then, uh, once you identify the construct, the variables, then we have to operationalize it. Instrumentation, very important. Huh? If you go to my YouTube channel, uh, recently, I think about a week before, I have uh, uploaded uh, a video on instrumentation. Please uh, go through to understand more. So, a construct, which is basically a variable, we have to have operational definition. Our own definition, our own research definition. A a construct, a concept may have many different definitions. Different academic may provide different definition. But then I will have to accept one. Uh, the way I measure the construct in my research, that is operation definition of the term. Huh? Then we find dimension and we have few items to measure that. These are the types of theory there. I don't think uh, I will be explaining uh, the, uh, on it okay, uh, today because I don't have really uh, much time. I see many questions there uh, on the chat box. Uh, many of you are there, <laughs> so I would rather handle uh, questions. Okay, I leave it this. I leave this to you for your own uh, reading. <clears throat> Function of TF uh, theoretical framework. Uh, basically, it provides a general framework of the study. It identifies the variable to be measured, right? In the research problem definition. Remember, I I propose a template whereby I put all the dependent independent variable there. So we put it in the uh, framework to show. Okay. What is a variable? Variable which something that differs, varies at different time. Act of purchase. When you purchase something, you don't buy exact amount every day or every time. And even the price of it not always the same. Okay. So quantity is different, price is different, quality is different. So you buy the same thing from the same shop, the same shop, and yet the quality is different. The price is different. So that's what you call variable. Variable that is something not a stick. Something not static, something varies from time to time. Okay, I've given some example here. I do not waste time there. Variables can be divided into three dichotomous, uh, the, the, the two uh, basically categorical male, female, employed, unemployed. It could be discrete when you have more than two categories, or you can have continuous. Okay, this is important. This slide I have to spend uh, time, uh, then I'll proceed to some other slides. A uh, dependent variable is something, uh, your theme of your research, the main research problem is dependent variable, which is dependent on others, so it's dependent variable. Independent variable are the causes, the issues to the problem, causes that contribute to the problem, that's an independent variable. And in between, dependent and independent, whatever fall, we call it intervening variable. One you call moderating variable, other one you call it mediating variable. So I'm going to show you with examples and then I will explain more. <clears throat> And we do have also antecedents and outcome variable in recent research. Huh? We do have that also. Even though there are some people who would say antecedent and independent variable are the same. It's true most of the time, but there are cases whereby you may have antecedent variable before independent variable. An outcome variable is same as dependent variable, but there are cases whereby you can have outcome variable after dependent variable. I'm going to show you with example. <clears throat> okay, this is a simple, uh, Theoretical framework, those of you are new with me, um, I, I do have to cover everyone. Huh? Those are very new and those are also experienced one. I have to cover everyone. So um, this is a, a topic, factors affecting internet abuse at workplace. So you can see internet abuse, uh, that is dependent variable and you have independent variable three. So we have basically three hypotheses. Hypothesis one, relationship between attitude, internet abuse and so on. Three hypotheses, okay? Now, can these three independent variable I just like it and put it there? No, must be supported by a theory. So these three uh, variable coming from TPB theory of planned behavior, they must be supported by theory. That's what we call underpinning theories, the theory that underpins my study. So you have philosophical underpinning before positivism, post-positivism, constructivism, or interpretivism, 
and now we have theoretical underpinning. We have theory that underpin that support your study. Okay. How a hypothesis should be written? I have given you three different ways of writing. All right. So you can obtain the slide and you can look at. There are many different ways of writing hypothesis, and I have written three hypotheses, three different ways for you to understand. Okay. Now uh, these are the synonyms of independent dependent variable. Independent variable are also known as predictor, stimulus. It's also known as antecedent and sometimes also known as manipulated, right? And many times nowadays you see in paper exogenous variable, right? Exogenous variable. And dependent variable are known as criterion variable, or predicted one consequence variable, or outcome variable, or indigenous variable. Okay, so those terms are very common. You can see it in papers. Now, what is antecedent variable? This is the framework you have earlier, right? I've shown you this before. But you can have even antecedent variable before. This is a real PhD thesis. Huh? So these are the antecedent to each independent variable. <laughs> so can I just pick the variable and put it there? No. Usefulness, ease of use, playfulness, these are all supported by theory. This is from TAM, Technology Acceptance Model. The next block also supported by theory. PR culture, supervisor culture, social exchange theory. So you can have even antecedents, and based on that, you may have variables also. Huh? So certain research, certain research, certain research, not all research requests it. You may have antecedents. This is moderating variable. The one comes in between dependent and independent. <clears throat> when moderating variable is introduced, basically either it increases the effect of independent to dependent or decreases the effect of independent to dependent. That's it. Either increases or decreases. So what happened, you know, when you have taken a research area and exhaustive research is done, you cannot find anything new in terms of independent variables. What do you do? Introduce a moderator. Show that this variable may increase or decrease relationship between independent and dependent. That's moderator. Okay. Uh, for moderating variable, you have certain conditions that uh, got to be made. Huh? Baron and Kenny uh, has mentioned those. Huh? So these are the some one that we have to be. Uh, very careful of and uh, so a moderating variable is typically introduced when there is an unexpected weak or inconsistent relationship between criterion and prediction variable predictor are independent variable criterion are dependent variable okay <clears throat> so when you find that thousands of research have been done but it's still the relationship between independent dependent is not that is strong so introduce another variable moderating to strengthen the effect of independent to dependent. Okay. <laughs> so that is moderating variable. So you have to fulfill that criteria. You cannot simply just put a variable and say, I want to test the moderating effect of this. Then that's not the way of doing it. You have to fulfill the prerequisites to introduce a moderating variable. Okay. So I do have uh, some other uh, one for you. Um, I leave it down. Huh? Now, mediating variable. Mediating variable also kind of in intervening variable uh, in between independent and dependent, right? Uh, but here uh, you have to have certain rules also to follow. Huh? Uh, so basically it says uh, uh, the independent variable causes the mediator, which then causes the outcome. This is uh, Shadish and uh, Sony. Huh? Uh, but McKinnon has different ideas. Huh? He has given different criteria. He said, first of all, to be moderator, the independent to dependent, the effect must be very strong and proven. And then the independent to mediate also, the test is proven. And then only you introduce a mediator, the mediator leads to uh, the dependent variable. So this is how McKinnon proposes, I mean, Baron Kenny, right? Independent to mediator to dependent, okay? And this is what McKinnon says, right? It says independent to dependent, independent to mediator, mediator to dependent. Okay, so that's how it should be uh, taken. Uh, but earlier I saw this, uh, it's proposing this, independent to mediator to dependent. All are acceptable, all are acceptable. Huh? Many people, as uh, before when uh, McKinnon and uh, McKinnon at all proposed this, independent to dependent and independent to mediator, mediator to dependent, when it was proposed, um, basically there were a lot of issues there, a huh? lot of issues there. So now we do accept also this, right? It's acceptable now. And Kelly, brother and Kelly, can you please mute your microphone, please? Kelly. <coughs> and Kelly, brother, can you please mute your microphone? It's a problem, la. <laughs> 
Okay, so this is one you can see mediating uh, variable. I'm giving an example of it. Um, uh, this is another complicated model you can see uh, going to uh, moderating to dependent. There are also way of doing it. Uh, uh, these are the few papers which you can read. Uh, since we'll be sharing the slide with you, I have given you about six papers, I think, yeah, seven papers for you to read to understand mediating and moderating variable. Okay. <clears throat> Now, certain research, you may have outcome variable. For example, like this, this one which you have. Remember? So this is your dependent variable and this is your independent variable. Now, there are some research where the dependent variable is searched, it looks like hanging. So when people, you conclude a research saying internet is being abused. So somebody may come and ask you, so what? So what? Internet is able, so what? <laughs> so your research does not really conclude anything. You just say these are the factors that affect internet abuse, that contribute to internet abuse. So you can have outcome variable. You say, no, internet abuse, if internet is abused, it contributes to some additional outcomes. For example, work efficiency and security tips. It may have some psychological outcomes. Uh, brother uh, Abhishek, can, can you please mute your microphone? Mute your microphone. Okay. okay. Sorry. Please, please mute your microphone. Please, please mute. Um, yes, I'm doing it. Uh, no, no, you still come back. You still not no, mute. Still come back. Still not... Okay, sorry. I'm muting it. Can you please mute it? It's not muted. It's not muting. I'm muting it. Sorry. So it may have some psychological outcomes also. Huh? So this is outcome variable. So, so internet abuse. If internet is abuse, you will lead to some psychological outcomes. It may lead to some psychological outcomes. So that makes your research conclusive. If you don't have that, your research is hanging. <laughs> okay, your research is hanging. So, but please remember, please do not misunderstand me and do not quote going to people and telling, you know, Prof. Aminul has told me that. I, must have approved I think the administrator should. Uh, should uh... Uh, thank you, thank you. I think the, the host is doing it. <laughs> so, sir. Yeah, just now did it. So. So, so, internet abuse may lead to some organizational and psychological outcomes. So that could be even more contribution, you know. So I have even uh, given you how a, an outcome hypothesis should be written. So you have the slide, you can go through that. So, so I've gone through all the independent variable, dependent variable, moderating variable, mediating variable, antecedent variable, outcome variable. Huh? I've gone through all that. And finally, for economics and finance, economic uh, uh, accounting studies, you may have control variable. That's what you know as purification variable. Uh, a variable that purifies the errors, you know, for example, like uh, you're producing a shampoo in the laboratory. How do you know that it's going to work under the sun? So you have to test it under the sun. So the sunlight become uh, the, 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 the control variable. Huh? So you're purifying whether it's going to be effective or not. So these are some examples given. And even uh, you can have models inside uh, uh, theory, right? Uh, as uh, uh, Mangred Egan, he said that theory has only uh, alternative of being right or wrong, but model has something additional. It is right and yet irrelevant. <laughs> so in economics, you study most of the time of finance, we do have modeling, right? So these are some, um, some modeling that I've just given you. That's how it is done. Okay. And uh, finally, the last two slides, uh, conceptual framework. Those of you who would like to do qualitative study, uh, definitely is going to be conceptual framework. You still remember the building blocks of a theory. You start with ideas, then concept, then construct, then proposition, then theory. So you start with ideas, then into concept. That's where you start and we end up with proposition or theory, okay? So you will have conceptual framework in that case. You may not have any theoretical support at all, okay? So these are some way of showing the conceptual framework, okay? Some examples are given. And I have also given clear cut distinction between theoretical framework and conceptual framework. This slide actually speaks a lot. Um, it may take even one hour for me to talk, <laughs> but I just leave it to you. Uh, in my YouTube channel, I do have uh, a video on this, uh, explaining the differences between theoretical and conceptual framework. 
uh, please watch that to understand more okay so thank you very much for your patient hearing i'm sorry uh, for taking longer time but i got no choice because we have decided to uh, cover two areas in one webinar <laughs> this is problem and theoretical framework uh, that makes it a, a quite difficult task for me but uh, i have tried my best to make sure i can uh, explain both of these topics to you very well and i know um, as I suffered during my PhD, everybody suffers with these two topics. As Panzamila told me, most of the students suffering with these two areas. So why don't we tackle these two areas first? So I don't know how um, uh, successful I was in explaining these two broader comprehensive topic. Uh, if I have contributed a bit uh, and explained uh, 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 a bit for you to understand this topic, I would be uh, very happy, all right? So now I, pass the session to Pawan Jamila and uh, I'm ready to answer any question that we have. You can even ask questions outside these two topics. I don't mind if the time allows. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. For that. Thank you, Prof. Very valuable sharing. Thank you, we are very grateful to you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. for sharing. Us okay. Very and there are a number of sharing. questions in the chat box. Uh, right. uh, I, I will read them for you in order of the receipt, Prof. But some of you, you have already answered. The first one is, what is the main difference in terms of a diagram between theoretical framework and conceptual framework? Is it possible to know how, how to differentiate them in diagrams? Uh, definitely, because theoretical framework uh, is supported by a theory and you have all variables there. Independent variable, dependent variable, mediating variable, moderating, or whatnot. These all are there. So clear cut demarcation line is there. A theoretical framework is supported by theory, underpinning theory and supporting theory. See, if it is supported by one theory, you call it underpinning theory. If you have more than one theory to support your framework, the dominant theory would be underpinning theory and the other theory becomes supporting theories. Okay, so a theoretical framework is guided, supported by theories. Conceptual framework is not supported by a theory. It's supported by the concept. You start the research with ideas, then you proceed to concept. Concept something that can be visualized, but it is not proved yet. So from some concept, you proceed to construct something measurable. So through your research, you show how can you measure the concept, and then you propose some propositions to be proved. That's where most of you will end up your PhD thesis. But some of you brilliant, some of you are very intelligent, brilliant, you may end up with a theory. So you test the proposition and you prove it, then it becomes a theory. You may end up like that. So there's a clear cut demarcation line. There's no problem on that. Huh? It's a theoretical framework supporting my theory, guided by theory, whereby a conceptual framework is guided by a concept. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. A very clear, direct answer. Okay, the yes. second question. Uh, what is the link between research questions and research problems? Wow, there's a, there's a direct link. There must be a clear cut link. Research problem is translated into research questions. See, for example, the example I have given you, I'm not feeling healthy. Why I'm not feeling healthy? Because I got body ache. I got runny nose. I got diarrhea. Those are the issues. So the research question is, how does the diarrhea affect my health? How does the cough affecting my health? Those are the research questions, you see? So once you identify the issues and problem, you relate the issues with the problem that become research questions. So your research problem must be, must be translated into research, few research questions, all right? And the third question is, are we to specify the topic first before identifying the research problem? I thought the problem should be identified first and then the topic, please explain. How can you identify the research problem before knowing the topic? If I want to do research in marketing, okay, now my research is about marketing. So before that, if I know the problem is here, like, you know, the, 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 the sales drop or problem with marketing efforts and all that, possible, you know the problem and from there, uh, uh, you know, you continue uh, the topic. Uh, but I would rather prefer to start with the general topic first. Keep in mind what you want to do, what interests you, uh, what do you see become a concern, a trouble, a problem 
uh, in the in the society and all that. So taking that general view, from there you identify, you know, a uh, 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 problem, a specific problem. Then you continue. So area of research first. Then only we identify problem, not research problem first. Then you go to areas. Okay. But it could be either way because, say, for example, a research problem is clearly identified even before you do the research. So you start with the research problem, then you finalize your topic. Possible, possible. Thank you. And the next one is if a new idea strikes in my head that might be useful in solving an existing problem that I don't find any literature on this issue. In that case, how can I start? Is there any practice on doing research without any theory and literature uh, review? Yes, we. I have explained that, right? I, I said a qualitative study start from zero. So people undertake qualitative study because there is no theories to explain the problem they have. Okay, so if you cannot find enough literature, enough uh, supporting theories. Uh, then you have to undergo inductive research, inductive approach. Okay, you have to go for constructivism or interpretivism, qualitative study. Definitely you can. So you start with ideas. You see, a qualitative study or, or inductive research, you start with ideas, then you go to concept. From there, we develop construct, then you propose propositions, then you come out with the theory. So you start from zero. That's qualitative study. Definitely you can do it, but very challenging. Uh, I am a quantitative person. But I do examine a few qualitative studies, and I found it's really challenging. Uh, for me, I do not feel I'm fit to do a qualitative study because I have not done any research yet. But to me, qualitative study is very challenging compared to quantitative one. Because quantitative, I have a theory to guide me. <laughs> but qualitative, I don't have it. So I have to go for constructivism or interpretivism. You start from zero, and then I'll come out with something, right? And I've given you the analogy. Remember, you are landed with this plain solid land and then you are you are harvesting the land planting the tree watering the tree fertilizing the tree finally you come out with what you want to get so that's inductive approach when you don't have anything okay the next question is if we extend our master thesis into a phd and if it is tracked by eternity in will it be counted in plagiarism <laughs> if you can you can proceed uh, from where you stop from master research to do PhD, you cannot convert your master thesis into PhD. Definitely, there will be plagiarism issues. Uh, most of the university allows up to 20%, right? Uh, uh, similarity. Uh, so, if you say, if your question is, can I proceed on the same topic of my master thesis to do PhD? I would say yes. I did have a student, Dr. Ulu Washei from Nigeria. It is masters in my university and he continued same topic to do PhD with me. And the life was so easy for him. You know, he finished within one year and nine months. The PhD completed and then university doesn't allow him to submit before two years. So I said, OK, these three months you write papers. <laughs> so we wrote papers and we published it. And after two years, he submitted two years, four months, everything done because he continued the same topic. There's no harm. But he did not replicate what did he do in the master research. He started where he stops, but the same area of research possible. And what's the difference between research problem and problem statement? It's the same. <laughs> a statement, you are you are describing research problem with the statements. That's why we call it the statement of problem. And the next one, Doctor, uh, can you help me explain the relationship between problem research and novelty? Okay, this is problem is a problem that requires research, that requires solution, and that solution must be through some kind of research. That is research problem. Novelty is something totally new. You see, a problem is there. Many solutions are available, but those solutions are not working now anymore. So you provide something new. So you provide something totally new, a genuine research, a genuine problem, and totally updated new solutions to your problem. That is the novelty. And the next one is, how can we stay motivated? How can we stay, stay more motivated? Motivated. Oh, motivated. <laughs> uh, follow my YouTube channel. I run a program. I call it the PhD journey. The PhD journey. Uh, once a month, uh, so far I run four series. Uh, I invite only vice chancellors and deputy vice chancellors of different universities from 
uh, the, the, in different parts of the world. So follow that program. Uh, how to keep yourself motivated? The, the vice chancellors and deputy vice chancellor they share their story of you know the journey of PhD, the problem they encounter and how they solve it. For me, uh, if you are doing a PhD, I do have my own experience. You know, uh, I was working full time and doing PhD. Uh, once my supervisor told me, um, Aminul, I want to. I'm thinking of uh, discontinuing your studentship. You know. And uh, I was so hurt, you know, I feel so bad. The supervisor telling me uh, she is going to cancel my studentship because I was not doing anything because I was working full time. And I was very hurt, you know, and uh, my supervisor was a very, very nice person. Huh? She's a Dato, a Dato and full professor. And I was very sad, but I told her, Dato, please don't do that. Uh, I, I will I will start working on it. Uh, please give me some time. <laughs> and then um, when I... Uh, quit my job and concentrated full time. Then my wife became pregnant and uh, being overseas, you know, being foreigner in Malaysia, I had no relatives, nobody to take care of her. So I have to take care of her and her family because she got a lot of morning sickness. So again, I become in, unproductive, you know, so I went to see my supervisor. My supervisor told me what, what happening now? You are so slow. I say, um, prof, my wife is pregnant. Then she said, you are not pregnant. <laughs> is your wife. It shouldn't be affecting you. <laughs> so everyone, every one of us undertaken PhD and those of you are undertaking now, all of us will have different kind of problem, but we have to stay focused, stay focused, you know, and at the time, you know, once I, I become very sick and I was hospitalized, I couldn't take pressure of my work and my PhD. That's why I come back to do full time PhD. And once I decided to go back to my country, you know, then my wife stood very strong. She said, no, you came here to complete your PhD. I'm not going to go back without PhD. <laughs> so she became the motivator behind me. You see, she became the motivator. That's how we say every successful man, there is a woman. <laughs> so my wife became very strong. She said, no, 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 I'm not going to allow you to go back. Finish your PhD first. So concentrate, focus. So basically, we call PhD as a journey. Uh, when you come out from a house to travel, uh, will you come back before going there? Unless there's a serious problem, no, right? You got caught in the traffic jam. I traveled from Perlis to Kuala Lumpur many times. And many times I got in the horrific traffic jam. Four or five hours got caught. And many times I used to tell my wife, can you go back? I don't want to go to KL. <laughs> can I come back on the highway when I got caught? No, right? I have to keep going. I have to keep going. So that's what PhD journey is. It doesn't matter. Every one of us, we get caught. You will get caught. But it doesn't matter. You are in a jam or whatever. Keep your mind positive. Keep your mind positive. You will never get anything in this world without hard work. Never. Even simple thing. You want to have breakfast in the morning. Do you think it's so easy? Just go to the table and you start eating? No, right? Even if you eat bread, you still you might be toasting and you might be having some uh, bananas or uh, fried egg or something there. You know, you have to eat uh, uh, Maggi goreng or me goreng or whatever. It takes effort, you know. You come out from the bed and you go to the chair and table and you have it. No, it's not. You still have to put effort. <laughs> so PhD is something that uh, we really uh, wish to, we really dream of uh, getting into uh, something. And we know that once we have it, our life will change, the career will change. Keep focused, keep focusing on, talk to people, talk to people. The best solution is talk to people. Talk to supervisors, talk to friends, talk to relatives, talk to your mom, dad, brother, sisters, whoever. You feel comfortable, sit down and talk. Say, I'm not really, I'm not really progressing. I'm not really productive. Uh, I'm not really doing, um, you know, so you get suggestions from people and get, keep yourself motivated. Like what we are doing now, right, with COVID-19, we have been locked down. I don't know how long I have been in the house. My wife, I think, did not go out from the house almost uh, a year. So how do I keep her motivated and uh, positive? I tell her, call your friends you like. You know, so now she has many school friends that she has never spoken last 20 years. Now she's talking. <laughs> and she feels like, you know, uh, she feels very well meeting with, uh, talking to people that she has never spoken last 20 years. That's how she is keeping her motivated. Something new has to be in your life. So while you do a PhD and you get caught, find something new. Keep yourself motivated. Stay positive, please.
Uh, you will finish it up, inshallah. And PhD is something as you enroll, you will finish one day. You will finish one day. <laughs> Keep going. Make sure you do something every day. <laughs> All right. I think, sorry, I'm taking a long time uh, to answer this question, but I thought it's uh, worth saying uh, more than the other it, question. It is worth because everybody faces that problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the next one is, Prof, can you help me explaining the relationships among problem research and uh, uh, that is problem statement and novelty in research and research gap? I think I have explained that during my talk and also during the question answer. So I wouldn't answer this question. Can you proceed to the next question? Okay. Please assist on how to use these templates to plot research problem in engineering. <laughs> uh, I'm from social science. I'm so sorry. Um, it's difficult for me uh, to say, but uh, the plot that I have given you, the template, uh, I put it in a way uh, can be useful for all discipline. I put two templates. One is theoretical knowledge. The other one is practical. So for engineering, definitely you have certain theories and concepts and constructs. All that can be used, definitely can be used and plot in that framework, knowledge gap. And then the next template, I put it industrial. So that one basically you have to find some industrial issues, industrial problems, some data and evidence from the industry, plot in that uh, uh, template. So when you combine these two, it becomes the research gap. Uh, I think even engineering, medical, you can do that. I do some research with um, some doctors from Quest University, Quest International University, Perak. Um, I do the statistical part and uh, when I do research with them on medical diabetes and many other issues, they do research with me and I see it's not really very different from us. It's not really different from us. So the template that I propose definitely can be used by uh, doctors and engineers. Engineer. Definitely you can. Okay. Okay. And the next one is a uh, confirmation question and he asks, Professor, can uh, just a confirmation here. A gap in literature is considered as issues or concern that is found in the literature. Am I right? So are they the same thing? Yeah, the, 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 the gap that you find, um, uh, those are the issues that contribute to the problem. Yeah, and those become the variable later, right? Um, and then you have to uh, combine it with industrial issues that make it a, a complete research gap. And the last question, uh, do we need to provide an underpinning theory to MSc, just like a PhD research? If you are following deductive approach, quantitative study, it is a must. <laughs> it is a must. But if you are doing a qualitative study, not necessary. Uh, Pon Jamila, if you allow some questions from the audience, they allow them to ask directly if you are okay. Yeah, uh, they are still online and they do not want to leave yet. So maybe we can allow them. Alaikum. Alaikum Alaikum. Doctor, I just I have a question about what difference between framework and model. Okay, framework whereby you put a framework with variables, and models are equations. You put variables in the equation format. That is modeling, and framework you are putting in a framework. <laughs> is that Doctor, okay? Doctor. 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 Yes. How do you get the lecture notes? The lecture notes, how do you get it? <laughs> okay. This video, I will get the video from Pom Jamila and then I will put it in my YouTube channel. This video, I will premiere it in my YouTube channel. If you want to listen one more time, you can listen. My YouTube channel is Platform for Research and Development. Platform for Research and Development. If Ms. Dr. Sonia is still there online, can you put that link in the chat box, Dr. Sonia, if you are still there? Uh, if you just type platform for research and development, those of you are here, if anyone uh, uh, subscribe my channel, can you go to it, get the link, or somebody has already put it there. Uh, Ahmad bin Ibrahim already put it there. So that's the link of my channel. Go there. Uh, I will premiere it. Uh, uh, next week, I will premiere one video on essentials of research. Uh, please listen to that video. It would be very helpful for you. And after next week, I will put this video in. So once I put this video under this video in the chat box, I will put the slides there for you. So you can get it there. In case if you don't get it from Ponjamila, you can still get it from my YouTube channel. Do not. These slides are developed, knowledge are for the purpose of sharing. So I know some people, they develop some slides and they will say, this is for me, I cannot share it. For me, it's not. 
if I develop it and some people get the help from it, I, I don't mind. Uh, that's, 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 that's definitely, I'm pleased to share. So slides will be there for you from the YouTube channel. You can uh, download it. Yeah, uh, I, I, actually 427 people have completed the feedback form. So those who have filled the form will definitely get the slides, uh, video, and the e-certificate. Okay. Okay, okay. So those who have not filled, please do it. Thank you. All right. Uh, next question. Okay, perfect. Yeah, okay, salam, salam. Sir, this is me, Jasir from okay. How are you, sir? I'm, I'm fine, thank you, thank you. My question is that how to make a research model and and uh, how to link theory into model? <laughs> um, Brother Zabit, uh, one of my very uh, old uh, students, loyal, <laughs> very loyal uh, supporter. That is almost all my weakness. Thank you. Uh, it's a difficult question to answer. Uh, basically, uh, when you have uh, a theory, uh, from theory, we'll have dimension, the constructs. Uh, so when we put the relationship between constructs in a an equation, it become a model. Is that clear, Brother Zabit? Right, sir. Thank you. I put relationship between constructs in an equation. It become model. <clears throat> But when I put it in the framework, it becomes framework. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Nida, yes. Nida yes. Malik, I think she wanted to ask question. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, so uh, I want to know about the underpinning theory. It will under the theoretical framework or it is it comes from the separate? No. Basically, your theoretical framework must be supported by a theory. The variables that you have chosen must be supported by theory. It cannot come from the sky. You cannot okay. say, I work on it and I feel like that. So I propose this uh, uh, variable. Cannot. Variables should be coming from some theories. Okay. Uh, I want to know about the underpinning theory and the uh, theory, theoretical framework. Actually, theoretical framework, you have independent, dependent variables. And yes. a theory that support those independent variables that we call underpinning theory. Oh, okay, okay, got it. <laughs> okay. And in case if we have variables which is not supported by one theory, more than one theory, so the dominant theory we call it underpinning theory, and other theory we call it supporting theories. Actually, I am confused in this parameter, so I, I want to learn about more these no things. Uh, okay, Prof. I have one more question related to this, my own. Actually, I have four research questions and uh, three of the questions are, are like connected to one theory and one question is another theory. So do I include both in underpinning theory? No, no. The, uh -huh. the, the, the theory that explain the three would be your underpinning theory. Right. The theory that explain one, that is a supporting theory. Okay, Prof. Thank you. You cannot have more than one underpinning theory. Underpinning theory is one. The rest of the theories are supporting theories. It's very clear. Prof. Thank you, Prof. Assalamu alaikum, Prof. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Yeah, uh, please, um, like, if you have uh, in a framework, um, you have the um, the IV, uh, the uh, and uh, this in the the DV, and then uh, your DV is uh, maybe uh, intention to shop online. So must you have uh, an outcome uh, variable also? Uh, if you follow the Utahot model, uh, I'm, on, I'm from finance, but since I, I have been conducting webinars all there, so I do have understanding of management, marketing, and all those areas. Uh, if you look at the uh, theory of planned behavior, the theory started with TRA, right? Yeah. Theory of reason action, TRA. Then you continue TPB. Then that TPB has been extended and then extended again. Now we call it UTAUT. UTAUT basically combine the TAM, Technology Acceptance Model, and TPB. Okay. So uh, there'll be cases. Um, Brother Osman, sorry, I lost the question again. Uh, what was your question? Yes, my question is uh, if you have a DV uh, um, uh, intention. Oh, okay, okay, I got it now. I got it now. Okay. So if you look at UTAUT, intention, you have attitude and it goes to intention. And then intention is not intention, it's just intention of having, intention of adopting, intention of buying, intention of doing something. That does not really conclude a research. And you thought proposed intention should follow on to actual behavior. <clears throat> yes. 
So in that case, <laughs> uh, you can use intention as more mediating in some cases, or you can use intention as dependent, and then actual behavior become outcome variable. Okay. Yeah, because I, yeah, because I've seen uh, many uh, studies that stopped at uh, intention. I know, that I know, I know. I'm very familiar with that. Yes. Yes. So, but by doing that, that, actually, you are not concluding in some of the research not concluded. So you might have to continue to actual behavior. That would be a complete research. Okay. What? Okay. 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 What if you you stop there and then uh, and say? But it's no that... problem. You can stop because if you find uh, that uh, adoption is not been done yet, uh, so you are looking at intention to adopt. Then you can stop at intention. You don't have to go to actual behavior yet. Okay. Okay, but if more. you are looking at intention to purchase, that you may have to continue to actual behavior. Okay, okay. Uh, Do you follow okay. me, brother? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Then, 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 please one more, one more, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see, uh, if you are using, let's say, um, uh, this is the without model or the term model, and mm -hmm. you want to extend, uh, you want, to, you want, you want to extend. So must you extend with the variables from another theory, or you can you can extend with other uh, other variables, maybe like a trust, maybe like risk, which are not uh, uh, variables from. I got your uh, question, Brother Usman. I got it. I understood what you tried to mean. Okay. <laughs> Basically, uh, TPB, TAM, uh, TRA, and without even those are very exhaustively, uh, exhaustively researched. So it's very difficult to propose something new to come out with something new. So how can you come out with something new? That is your question. Uh, possible, you can integrate theories. You can bring another theory into action. <laughs> For example, like social exchange theory can be introduced together and you can come up with the new framework possible. Or those people have conducted latest research on Utah. In every paper at the end, you will see they have some suggestion for future researcher. So they do have recommendations that these are the variable can be tested. So you can pick up a new variable from those suggestions. So you still have citation. Okay. It's not supported by theory, but you do have citation from literature. Okay. And then you introduce and test it. And if it is tested positively, it's found to be significant. Oh, that's a novelty. Oh. So completely a new findings for you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Prof. Welcome. In the chat box, the, my YouTube channel link is there. Somebody put the question. Can you please share? Just go up. The, the link is there. Somebody has given the link. Okay, uh, maybe we take another two questions and then we end up the session. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Hi, bro. Uh, I have this question, please. Do you have any suggestion and theory related to social commerce? <laughs> uh, myself, my PhD is in finance and yeah. uh, I'm supposed to be concentrated in finance, but since uh, I want to develop myself as multi disciplinary researcher so i do research in marketing human resource I, I know i did produce three phd in marketing <clears throat> two phd in human resource management even though my phd is in finance because i wanted to develop myself as multi disciplinary research so i do have understanding of many other theories but the area you are talking about um, um i did some research on online shopping and all that but i'm not very sure what theories could cover your area i'm sorry um but I think the Google uncle has everything for you. Uh, you may consult Google uncle. Uh, you may get something better. Just go and type. Just go and yeah. type. Theories related to this topic. You will see Google uncle will give you many theories there. <laughs> yeah. But please, the, bro, uh, because I am stuck on this uh, topic, because I'm talking about uh, social commerce and uh, business performance. So I find like RBV to cover a uh, theory to cover the performance okay mm. but social commerce i i stuck with this topic because it's like research based view we are research based view could be one theory but there could be some other theories also available i'm, I'm not very sure uh, what i prefer you know i would suggest uh, talk to professors in that area like uh, there was one marketing student i was supervising and uh, one internal examiner was giving him trouble so what i did i advised the student okay uh, you email to a few professors. Do you identify professors? You know, there was one professor, Professor Dr. Mahazira. She was the deputy vice chancellor of University of Malaysia, Tringanu, marketing professor. It's okay. Email her and seek her opinion. Then we identify a professor from Spain and one from uh, US. So you wrote three emails to three professors. Mm -hmm. And then we got feedback from them. And then we revised the model. 
So that could be one good way of looking at it. You know, find good papers, good professors, email them. Almost every professor will be happy to reply to you. You know, I receive emails almost every week uh, seeking suggestion, clarification, and I do reply every email, even though I'm so busy. You know, still I'll reply. It may be a bit late, but I'll always do it. I'll always do it. And it's all professors do it. You know, there was one case in my one student uh, during the Viva versus session. One internal examiner said uh, he doesn't think that in PLAs you can have two dependent variables you can analyze. I say, why not? In SPSS, third generation language, we can use two dependent variables. This is fourth generation language PLAs. Why not? But he doesn't want to agree with that. He said, no, cannot. So the chairman was in panic, you know, and he didn't know what to do. And he wanted to fail the student. So the chairman said, no, I don't think the student should fail. The student defended the thesis so well, he answered all the queries we have. And now because of one technical issue, which the supervisor said that you are saying wrong, I'm not going to fail the student. So the chairman said, okay, I give major correction and uh, ask me, prof, can you please consult with some, um, some expert, you know? So what I did, after the session, I emailed to Sastik in Spain, huh? the Sastik, the, the PLS guy. Huh? And then the other one is here at all, right? Here, uh, Joseph here, Joseph F here, US. So Sastid has answered. Uh, then I also emailed to Ringel from Germany, the fathers of PLS. Ringel didn't reply. But then Joseph here replied very clearly. He said, what you have done is exactly what you should have done. So that's it. He gave me the answers. I pass it to the chairman. So the student passed. So that's how it is. So if you know experts in your area, email them. Get suggestion recommendation from them. That would be helpful. Inshallah, thank you. I'm Allah not expert in your area. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum, Prof. Wa alaikum Assalamu alaikum, Prof. Yeah, wa alaikum salam. Uh, sir, please. Um, I'm trying. Uh, it's an requirement I'm trying to make. In your in your primary uh domain theory, can one integrate two theory together as the main theory in your research? Say, for example, one, one theory, you have three dimensions, so three independent variables. Another theory, you have three independent variables, so six. You may not have to take all six based on the research problem you have in hand. You may pick two variables from one theory and three variables for another theory and integrate and propose a new framework. No problem. Integration can be done. So when you are integrating, integrating, it doesn't mean you have to take both theory completely, not necessarily. Not necessary. You have to justify the selection of, I know, the variables based on the problem in hand. Did I answer That's your question, right. brother? Did I answer yes. your question, brother? Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Jamila, the last question. Is that okay? The last question. Okay, the last question. Hello, hello sir. Good evening. Good. My name is Rajiv from India. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Uh, so it's, I, it was a wonderful session, sir. Uh, you know, I was listening throughout. I have some uh, basic request to it because I'm doing on a research on the topic called uh, halal logistics. Okay, and uh, will you please, uh, because I saw your email ID and other things, because I need some research material uh, related to this particular area. Can you help me on that, sir, if possible? Time permits, not now, but maybe after some time. <laughs> I think I would rather email me. 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 Email Oh, sure, sir. Actually, I've already joined in that WhatsApp group also. Okay. Oh, okay. you are in my WhatsApp group? Group? Yeah, group three. Okay. Okay. I don't have group three. I have, I have three. three. I have three. But then it is showing group three, sir. Oh, then maybe Dr. Sunni has me all the time. I saw that in the uh, chat box. Okay, maybe, okay, maybe two is four. He has opened up enough. So, so uh, your WhatsApp number, sir? Uh, in the group, uh, in the group okay, can, I was okay, uh, 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 yeah, given my yeah, number. Given my number, number box, box, the box, the box, 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 box. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take it in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, plus, please tell me, sir. Plus, uh, plus six, uh, plus zero, six, six. zero and six. Yeah. Four zero four nine. Four zero four nine. Zero eight seven. Zero eight seven. 
Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so kind of you. Thank you. Hello, doctor. Hello, prof. Sorry. Hello, prof. Sorry. Yes. Hello, prof. Yes. Please, I have I have questions, sir. No, first of all, no, I want to find a water gun and shoot you. You tell me a lot. Do you mean something? You say what, sir? <laughs> I'm saying that I I'm want to buy a water, water gun. Water then gun. I want to shoot you. Then I want to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sir. Please. Because the only gun was not mentioned, so you tell me. No, it, so it, was, it, was, it was. It was. It was. It was a mistake, sir. It, it was a mistake. It, right. It's my device. Was my device that is just it was was just uh uh horn right. unknowingly. Right. No question, please, sorry, sir. No problem. Yeah, my question, my question is that I want to know the difference between the research problem and the research gap. Uh -huh. <laughs> research problem and the research gap. That's number one. Number two, what difference between the practical gap? And theoretical gap and methodological gap. Okay. Uh, number one, uh, number this one, is uh, problem. Basically, what it do identify the gap from the literature, which is there, and we get some data from the industry to support that gap. That become your research gap. That become your research problem. Okay. So okay. you so you look at the literature, you look at the knowledge, and there are some consistencies, inadequate solutions, and whatnot. So those become your literature, then supported by some data based in industry, it becomes research gap. When this research gap is written and highlighted, it becomes a research problem. It becomes a research problem. So that that so in in very they are the same thing. Yeah, and then uh, the the same same thing, basically, the theoretical gap is when you are identifying some gap in the uh, theory, theory, and I have given a slide explaining that. Uh, please uh, listen to that one more time. Uh, you can verify theory, nullify theory, validate theory, integrate theory. I have given many there to identify theoretical gap. Methodological gap also, I have given a slide and explained it quite well, whereby you have something that is not there, a new instrument, you know. Uh, uh, proposing a new uh, way of doing research, you know, p p p all, all those are there. Those are the methodological gap. And practical gap is where you have policies, but the policies are not working. I have given example of harassment. Policies are daily organization, but harassment is still taking place. You know, so you have to have new policies to stop that. Uh, whether the problem is implementation, poor implementation, or maybe that policies are not sound, not comprehensive enough. You see, so those are the policy gap uh, or practical gap. Do you follow me? Brother Adesigun, do you follow me? Or maybe he's angry because I wanted to shoot him. <laughs> no, we muted him because it was making a lot of noise. <laughs> oh, bro, I have a gun. <laughs> yes, brother. Yes, brother. Yes. Um, uh, I understand that. Sorry, Ms. Panjamila. Can I ask him? Can I ask my question, please? Yes, yes, madam. Sure. Uh, thank you. And uh, Dr. about experimental method. It's very uh, dynamic and important about approach and based uh, on a specific variable to study uh, their relationship and uh, 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 circumstances. The research provide the variables. My question: Can the research, the researcher, create a new methods or methods from afar? For example, I uh, I live in Ankara. I create or I got I I get a new variable. Can I uh, create a new approach, a new gap? But another country. For example, in Iraq, and I, 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 my question: Can I create a very uh, experimental method in another country about uh, about variables? Okay, uh, there are two questions. Uh, if I understood it well, number one: Can I create a variable uh, to a new context? You cannot create a variable. You can with some kind of support. Any variable that you propose, there must be some kind of support. 
Now, if you do not have support from the theory, you can have yes, support yes. from literature. Say, for example, somebody has published a paper and in the suggestion for future research, it's proposed that my R square was only 50%, meaning that my research capture only 50% variation. So there are many other variables. For example, this, this variable can be tested. So that is an evidence that become a new variable. Nobody has tested it before. You are testing it. So that way you can create a new variable. That's number one. Number two, can I yes. do a completely a new research in the new context? Definitely we can, but it has to be well justified. You have to justify it well. Remember, methodology is one of the most important elements of research. Robustness of research and analysis depending on the research design you choose. I have initially put research design in my slide. Later, I have decided to take it out. Okay, so I cannot, I did not discuss today. So if you're talking about ex explanatory, sorry, you're talking about experimental. In social science, so we do not really do a lot of experimental research. We do, I'm not sure whether you're from social science. We do rather uh, explanatory, exploratory, you know, descriptive, uh, reporting, those, those research design more, uh, 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 more adopted rather than experimental. Experimental research, if you are doing, then uh, uh, possibly you might be uh, uh, moving into some kind of applied research. Huh? Uh, you can, huh? you can, you can, but it has to be justified. I think Mr. Vivek Kumar wants to uh, ask a question, is it, Mr. Vivek? Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, uh, Ms. Gina, did I answer your question? Thank you, Doctor. That's very kind of you. I'm I'm still in the session. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Who who has the question? Sorry, Mustafa, brother Mustafa. Yes. yes. Assalamualaikum, doctor. Assalamualaikum. Uh, doctor, I just want to inquire about the analysis using Amos. So, for moderator, is it need to because in my framework, conceptual framework, I got three moderator variables. Okay. So three variable uh, moderator variables. So I cannot like manage an Amos in one diagram. So the IMAS required me for make it like three three models for the moderator and one models for the direct relationship. So then later on, uh, regarding to Awang, I want to say is need when you do the analysis the moderator using the this model. Okay, need to test the direct relationship first, then the moderator relationship, then the interaction. So is it that the analysis is, uh, is right regarding your experience about it? Why not you use PLS uh, since you have three moderating? Uh... Uh, PLS would be more efficient than uh, uh, MOS, I guess. Because my supervisor asked me to use MOS okay. because she says more <laughs> accurate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If I were you, I would have uh, employed PLS, not uh, MOS. Uh, uh, PLS would have been easier for you. PLS is more uh, 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 student friendly, user friendly, uh, and uh, more easy to explain uh, than MOS. So it's, it's up to you. Uh, so can uh, I later but, email you the, the analysis? Just check for me is if it is possible. I know you already. Okay, 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 okay. All right, yeah, all right. I Mr. Vivek, uh, Mr. Vivek, have tried many times. Switch on the microphone. Would you like to say something? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Vivek. I think uh, he got internet issues possibly. We we can't hear you, uh, Mr. Vivek Kumar. Sorry. Cannot hear him. Okay, I think we, we uh, Brother Mohammed Nizam, okay. Uh, you have a question? Cannot hear you also. You have to be louder. Cannot hear you, brother. Sorry. Sorry, we, we, we can feel you are talking, but we cannot hear. <laughs> uh, Once Amila, possibly we give the last chance, the last question. I haven't read. I haven't read answer, so time is running out. Just uh, one more question. Anyone? Last question. Last question. Hi, bro. Yeah. Hi, bro. Could you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, Very clear. Hi, bro. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I have uh, one more question because I'm actually from the health science and my supervisor are from health and medical science, so they don't really uh, know about the social science like theory something like that. But I want to put this theory inside my 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 study so but uh but you already uh answer the one, my, one of my question uh from the from one um regarding the intention and then how to uh without uh theory before okay 
So for my study, I actually wanted to use that as a supporting theory, and I use one more theory as the underpinning uh, theory. So I'm using integrating framework. So I wanted to know uh, if I'm using a, the integrating framework, is it the conceptual framework or a, uh, or, or another framework? I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> Since you have theories to support your framework, it is a theoretical framework. It is a theoretical framework. You have theories to support, so it is a theoretical framework. If you do not have any theories to support your framework, then it becomes conceptual framework. Since you already know there are two theories supporting you to develop the framework, it is a theoretical framework. Very clear, Kara, huh? Sister Noor Sajwani. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, bro. Welcome. Uh, uh, sorry, Jamila, uh, just sorry. Uh, okay, I I, I think uh, brother Nizam was trying to say something. Is he? Okay. Uh, can can you hear me now? Yeah, clear now. Okay. Uh, what is the option if our study area do not have established a uh, theory, such as in financial distress, where most of scholar uh, mentioned that there is no accepted theory for this uh, area? Is it possible for us to pursue with the the study? By depending on uh, previous scholar or empirical findings and financial distress, uh, who said there is no theory there? Uh, a few papers there are. are, are... <laughs> no, no, there are theories rather. There are theories. Even you can connect agency theory uh, when it come to financial distress. Uh, uh, but what happened? Uh, they have theory, but it's not generally accepted. That one you have to make it acceptable. So you um, have to justify. Yeah. They have to justify. There are theories available and financial distress. Definitely, there are theories. Okay, please uh, uh, review more papers. Okay, okay. because yeah. I, I read there's a lot of theory, but no accepted theory. No, you can, our... no, that 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 one you have to make it acceptable. That is our job. So one of the research gap. Remember, I have shown you the, the knowledge gap, verifying theory, validating theory. Remember. So you yeah, can validate the theory. A theory has not been acceptable, but you make it acceptable through your research. Okay, all right, all right. Thank yeah. you. Bro. Welcome. All right, so thank you very much. I'm sorry we have to almost three hours we have been uh, uh, with the session. Uh, yeah. I, I wish I could have answered more questions. Uh, possibly uh, you can join uh, some uh, of my other sessions. Actually, I do have, I think, almost six or seven webinars planned. Uh, next week, I have one in Jordan. And then after that, I have the PhD journey, uh, the, the mega webinar that I run. Followed by there will be one webinar on in vivo for qualitative people, followed by one webinar on STATA for those who use panel data analysis, followed by uh, SPSS. The first session, I conducted two sessions already on SPSS. The final session, I haven't done it, and many have been waiting for that. So I'll do that also. And uh, so, meaning that there are many already in place. Uh, almost every week, there'll be webinars. So, if you would like to follow me, um, uh, uh, you can join in my WhatsApp group. Or uh, keep following me in my YouTube channel. You can uh, most of the time I will share. If I run it through my YouTube channel, I will run it there. You can join even in my Facebook. Uh, I think my Facebook ID is what? Uh, my Facebook ID okay. is Muhammad Aminul Islam. I think uh, if you put MD, MD Aminul Islam, uh, I always post the poster there. Then I am not active in Facebook. I don't. I do not want to waste my time. I feel it's wastage of time uh, by uh, involving in Facebook. So I do not open Facebook. I just open Facebook when I want to post a banner to let people know that I'm going to conduct a webinar. That's it. <laughs> I do not waste time there. <laughs> uh, all right. So you can follow me in the Facebook or uh, you can follow me in the YouTube channel. Uh, Platform for Research and Development. That is my YouTube channel. I will always uh, update. Uh, this video will be available there. If uh, Ponjamila uh, gives me once, then I will edit it and then I will put it there. Okay. And the slides I will share with Ponjamila and she will uh, email you as she promised. Uh, Ponjamila, do not send them the video. They have to watch the video on YouTube and download from there. Send <laughs> 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 them the certificate and the uh, and, and, uh, 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 slides. But don't give them the video. Video, they have to get it from the channel. Okay. okay. All right. So thank you very much uh, for being so patient. Um, uh, listen to me. Uh, I wish and hope that uh, I can contribute more to you uh, and I wish you uh, best of luck in uh, undertaking your research and hope to see you in uh, some other future uh, webinar, inshallah. Okay. So thank you. Thank I you. Pass, uh, I pass the session on uh, Zamila. Yeah.
yeah, inshallah we can organize some more in the future bro. and uh, yeah. we would like to take some pictures a group picture if you can switch on your video camera please everyone there will be so many uh, i think you have to take few yes pages. there are so many pages there are so many pages i think i think could be easily 20 pages or 30 pages i'm not sure so those of you who are there if you don't mind you can switch on uh, the camera uh, who's taking the pictures uh, for Jamila? Yeah, I, I'm taking and yes. If you are if you are taking, then you have to change the screen and take the shoots. Hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey. I wish you could. Sorry, my camera is problem. <laughs> So, so we we have a truly international webinar. Um, I think almost uh, about thirty to forty countries. Uh, later we'll summarize. We'll get it from the Google form. Yeah, we. And um, this is, I think, could be my third third uh, highest number of participants. My highest was one thousand seven hundred twenty five live, alive. Eh? One thousand seven hundred twenty five. That was the highest. And then um, second highest was I think about uh, 800. And today I think the third highest number of participants. Like 490. Yeah, yes. yeah so about 500. Yeah, but uh, if you have shared in Facebook, there could be many more in the Facebook. Are you taking the pictures? Uh, Sister Jamila, are you taking the pictures? Pavitra, sorry. Pavitra, are you there? Who is taking the pictures? You or someone else? Oh, someone else. Uh, yes. Pavi? Okay, you have to basically change uh, the screen and take the photos. Three hours is long. Uh, those of you are listening to me, of course, uh, it's tiresome for you. But for me, it's more challenging because I have to keep uh, ideas flowing. <laughs> Uh, so, Prof, when, when is the next make session? Sure, uh, you really understand me, and uh, I have to make sure I explain this very well. And uh, I cover very comprehensive areas. So, uh, for me, it's really tiring, <laughs> but uh, it's enjoying and exciting because I'm contributing to many of you. Because I'm contributing to many of When is the next session, sir? The next session is next Saturday. That is organized by Mota University Jordan. So I'm not sure whether they are going to keep it open for everyone. Uh, if they keep it open for everyone, I will post it, post it in my Facebook as well as I'll put it in my webinar groups. So from there, you can follow. That topic is a very important topic. Uh, identifying research gap through literature review. That is the topic. So that's, I think, would be of uh, interest of many of you. So you can follow me either in the Facebook. Or I do also post in many social media. Uh, and even all the webinars I do is free. Eh? I don't charge. I do it free. <laughs> I do it free. Uh, some nice. webinars I want to uh, put it in a way like I will say, any, if anybody would like to contribute, contribute, the money would be given to the corona affected people. Uh, there will be two, three webinars. I will do that. Okay. So the money collected from the country will be spent in that country. So the collection from Malaysia will be given to Malaysia. Collection for, say, for example, my country, Bangladesh, money will be given in Bangladesh. So that way we'll do uh, two, three webinars okay. just to help those people are affected uh, by Corona. Okay. So, so I'm not going to force it. You do not want to pay, you don't pay. But if you pay, we are going to be to people. I'm not going to take a cent. Eh? I don't do that. Alhamdulillah, I have a stable job and I have a salary. So I, I don't have to charge for this. Okay. I'm just contributing is is part of Sadaka. Eh? It's a Swadga Zaria. It's a Muslim. It's a Swadga Zaria. <laughs> Uh, so even if I'm not in this world, still I will still get the pahala, right? In Malay, you call it pahala, right? <laughs> I will still get the benefits for it. Sir, can you share your Facebook name? I think MD Aminul Islam. MD MD is Muhammad short form A M I N U L Aminul Islam. If I'm not mistaken, uh, possibly you can put MD Aminul Islam in email Malaysia or something Malaysia. You will find me. My picture is there, so you will identify me there. And if you subscribe my YouTube channel, you, you can also follow me there or you join in my WhatsApp group. Uh, I've given you my WhatsApp number. If you want me to add you in the WhatsApp group, I will do that. I think many messages I receive, many. I think uh, more than 50, yeah, 58 messages. I already joined your WhatsApp group, uh, sir. Okay. okay. 
So there are many as uh, message me one wants me to add them in the WhatsApp group. I'll do that. I'll do that. Will take some time. Maybe I'll have to ask my son or daughter to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my YouTube channel actually okay. I don't run. I don't do That's yeah. very kind of you. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you for, your for my YouTube channel, I don't do anything. My son and my daughter, they run it. My son is uh, 18 years old and my daughter is 13 years old. They are the one. They will prepare, they will edit, they will do all things. I do not know even how to edit the video. They will do it all. So Sorry, they run their channel. I don't. Yeah, while talking, if you can switch on your video camera. You can continue talking, but just keep it on so that I can take the pictures. Thank you. Okay, now now she's taking pictures. Those of you can keep it uh, the video on. Please keep it on. It's very troublesome here because you cannot take everybody in one screen <laughs> in WaveX. <laughs> so I think you have more than thirty pages. So she has to take 30 pictures, difficult. <laughs> so who is taking it from Jamila? Your microphone is muted. So Jamila, yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm taking, I am taking the <laughs> Okay, change the screen and take it. Are you changing the screen? I see the same screen, you know. Oh, changing. Oh, yeah, changing, but we don't see that. Okay, okay, no problem. It's 702. Uh, we still have time for us, sir. It's okay. On Facebook, there are a lot of people with your name, so it's a little bit tough to, to identify. My, but see my photo. See my photo, you will identify. My photo was there in the poster, right? The poster you have seen? Uh huh, yeah. The photo, you can identify my photo easily. Okay, let me see what, uh, okay. Uh, give me, give me a second. I find out, I don't use Facebook that often. Uh, okay, let me see. Oh, no, 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 it's not Muhammad, it's Aminul Islam. A-M-I-N-E-L, I-S-L-A-M, Aminul Islam. And that is now seen, that is perfect. Yeah, A-M-I-N-E-L, Islam, Aminul Islam. You can see my picture there. I only accept uh, people in my Facebook who are doing research. So I don't accept any other. <laughs> so I want to keep it free. So I think about 2000 there, but all 2000 are researchers. I don't keep any other one else. I get many requests, I all reject and delete. I will review their profile. I, if I find the person is doing research uh, or related to research, I will accept. Otherwise, I don't. <laughs> OK. okay. Is it done, Pawan Jamila? Yes. Yeah, it's done. It's done. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much to all of you who participated. We will be sending you a certificate and the slides as well. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we, Thank you. Uh, yeah, you will Thank also you. get uh, the video recording. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 See you some other time, inshallah. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you, bro. Welcome. See you, inshallah. Stay safe. Stay safe. Let's pray for each other. Uh, and we pray for people who are affected by Corona worldwide. I have decided not to do that full time. This uh, I decided to give the money to the Corona people rather than doing the Kurban. Thank you for joining. I see many new faces uh, in today's webinar. I think many of you have hey. attended my webinar. This is the first time, possibly, right? I yeah, found this. So many different countries, bro. Oh, yeah, see you, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. fine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Many from Nigeria, Tanzania, Tanzania, Gambia, those areas, there are many. Somalia. Thank you, bro. Welcome, welcome. 
Is that Brazilian? <laughs> yeah, Francis. How are you yeah. doing? Okay, yeah, I'm fine. fine. Thank you, Francis. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Good. Brother Fuseni, your microphone is uh, off. You are unmuted. You are muted. <laughs> It's a long session. I didn't know how did you uh, keep me behind me for three hours. <laughs> long sessions, and you are still with me. Uh, I thought some of you will leave after one hour. <laughs> At least three hundred stayed till the end, bro. At least three hundred. Yes. Okay. See you. See you, inshallah. So, if you allow me, uh, I would like to leave. Uh, Thank you very much. My, my yes. prayer time, my prayer time is going. So it's seven six already. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, may Allah Subhanahu Taala bless you, God bless you, stay safe and healthy, and uh, hope to see you some other time. Actually. See you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, God.